execution. Bad drivers cause car wrecks. Not paying attention to the road, operating electronic devices, and drinking while driving can lead to serious injuries. If you've been the victim of a bad driver, a trial lawyer may be able to help you recover money to pay your medical bills, reimburse you for lost wages, and compensate you for the pain caused by your injuries. If you, your friends, or family have been injured in a car wreck, contact me, Attorney Dennis Sperling, toll free, 866-529-2444. I'm here to help. Hey, if you're enjoying the content here at Dennis Sperling Unfiltered, make sure you support it by like, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And also, hit that little notification bell in the corner so that you'll get notice of each and every one of our live feeds. I am the, I am the Blizzard King. Now, what does that actually mean? What that means is I represent that cold shoulder that you're going to begin to feel from black men. And we see you for who you are, black woman. We see you for the hate-filled individuals that you become because of your selfishness and your waywardness and your falling away from morality and what the most high God wants for you. But let me tell you the difference between you and that white woman. That white woman stood by her man through 500 years of blood and guts, she stood by her man. And whether she liked it or not, she was right on board with him dominating this world. The Asian woman has been oppressed. The Asian man has been oppressed by 500 years of, of, of white male domination. So has the Native American and the Indian in India and the African and the Arab man, everybody. It's the white man's time to rule. Everybody gets a chance. Black people had 80,000 years and you sat next to the black man when he ruled. For the past 500 years, the white man is ruling. Guess what you do? Instead of being good companions and getting in line and waiting your turn again, you want to crap all over the black man, even the ones that mean you well. So ladies, you're being replaced. And here's the thing, I'm not going to be nice to you about it. See, I'm not like Kevin Samuels. He tried to do right by you. He tried to teach you, but I've realized you're going to hate me anyway. So what I'm going to do is give you a reason to hate me. So when I'm called home to my ancestors, all that you say will be justified. And I'm okay with that. What's up, what's up? Shout out to everybody in the chat room, man. It's good to be back. Good to be here with you all. Y'all make sure y'all uh, hit the thumbs up button as you come in. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel. 
hey, you know what? They're trying to cancel Uncle D, so we're going to have a subscription. Uh, 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 <laughs> what is it? A subscription drive. I want you all who appreciate what I'm doing, whether you hate me or love me or whatever you do, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I want to prove a point to all these people trying to cancel D, canceling Uncle D. The more you try to cancel me, the more people subscribe to the channel. So y'all go ahead and do that. They threatening to call the Bar Association on me in every state in America, the highest courts of the land. And so, you know, man, hey, I support them 100%. I want them to I want them to cancel me. I want them to do their very best job to cancel me, cancel Uncle D, whatever, whatever, whatever they're doing, they're doing. They even saying my kids are gonna be they're gonna have to deal with the legacy of what I'm doing here. But I'm proud of what I'm doing here because I'm bringing light to a lot of things. Specifically, I'm bringing bringing light to the to the plight that black men have had, the unspoken, uh, the silent majority of black men who haven't had a voice who haven't spoken, who haven't had anyone who has been their advocate and solely their advocate, their advocate for black men and black boys, not, not, not somebody that's pandering and pretending to be an advocate, but somebody who has some skin in the game. I got three sons. I got three black sons. And uh, I want to see them grow up in a world where they don't have to have that monkey on their back, these stereotypes that they're thugs, that, 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 that they're no good fathers. And so I'm gonna do my very best to put all the information out there that dispels those negative stereotypes. Because see, it's those stereotypes that get us shot. It's those stereotypes that have the jury and the judge looking at us sideways when we come in the courtroom. Uh, yeah, we know you did something, Negro boy, Negro man. We know you did something. So I gotta do what I gotta do. This is for self-preservation. If you wanna cancel me for trying to make my life better, trying to make the life better of other black men, trying to make the life better of my sons. Hey, that's what you, you got to do what you got to do. We're going to see who win in the end. Nevertheless, man, big shout out to everybody in the chat room. All my wrench, my broken blade, simple shit TV, GSLA. Uh, who else we got up in here? Clarence ever, ever. These are all my uh, wrench mob guys. Uh, my, my wrench guy, my y'all make sure y'all keep the chat room fleet free and clear of the unnecessary detractors, Urban Eagle. Uh, big shout out to everybody. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate you guys. So here's a topic tonight, man. And I, I think it's going to be an interesting one. Okay, so we got a lot of men traveling overseas. Got a lot of brothers talking about they're going to find a woman overseas to get married. Let me just sit back. This is going to be a little different because <laughs> I'm going to be speaking from personal experience. And y'all be able to tell when I'm talking from personal experience. Some of y'all shouldn't get married. Just, just, just some of y'all just shouldn't get marriage is not for everybody. Okay. Marriage is not for everybody. Did you hear me when I say that? Huh? Marriage is not for everybody. All you dudes shouldn't be married. Okay. I, I, yeah, I, I get it. Ideally we all will be paired up with a woman, but some of y'all dudes are not marriage material. And look, and before I go in, you know, Uncle D simping, I, look, I spend a lot of time defending you brothers, men generally, but black men specifically, I spend a whole lot of time defending you and your reputation. But right now, we're going to have to have an honest conversation between your Uncle D, right, and, and, and his nephews. Some of y'all ain't good. Y'all shouldn't be husbands. Y'all whorish. <laughs> you don't pay your bills on time. You can't keep your penis in your pants. Okay, you just shouldn't get married, fellas. You're irresponsible as hell. You shouldn't get married. And some of y'all are just too young. You just don't do it. Uh, shout out to my man, Cerebral Inquirer, JM, Ken Barracuda. They canceled themselves. We play chess over here. They must, uh, what do you say? They, they must love chess mate. Uh, uh, checkmate. Right, right, right. But, but, but back to what I was saying. Some of you fellas just should not get married, and you shouldn't play with these little girls. Uh, the young ladies and play all up in their watercolors knowing that you shouldn't be married. Okay. I know it looks good. It brings up your standing in the community, right? But it's nothing worse than a bad divorce, especially when you've been put out there. And here's what's even worse. You know, went overseas, you done found you a fine woman from Thailand or the Philippines. Okay. You done brought her back here and you are still the same assholes that you always were. You're cheating. You're still hanging out at the strip club. 
you still talking to that gal you was talking to right before you got married probably hit something the night before you got married there's plenty of dudes around here in h-town that's married and cheating okay you can see them every thursday night at any strip club on richmond boulevard wing night you can see them well actually tuesday is wing night you can see them every tuesday <laughs> every tuesday night okay they in there with their sweaters on and their loafers looking like they married okay with with, with, with the little tight the tight the tight sweaters on and they, they, they you see them in there going to the atm machine huh getting 20s out you married and cheat dog why even get married don't do it don't even do it that's all i'm saying then you see them slide off to that back room over there come out they come out come out about 30 minutes later stretching like that like yeah, we see you. We know what you've been doing. Married and cheating. Somebody type that in the chat room. Married and cheating. Okay? Now, I tell you fellas all the time, just don't get married, man. Just don't get married if it's not you. And don't get married till much later in life. Uh, You know, do not get married before 35. And uh, you should wait until your late 30s, early 40s before you do get married because the whole point of getting married is to have kids and you want a stable woman, but yeah, married and cheating. That's what a lot of you dudes are doing. Okay. And it's not just the black man thing. Okay. It's a, it's a every guy thing. And I know my good friend, Kevin Samuels, I know he used to tell y'all that high value men can cheat. <laughs> and this is one of the things that me and KS different, different on Now, Look, I don't, I don't give relationship advice. But what I try to do is try not to, you know, I try to give you guys advice that helps your reputation and your name. Don't cheat. If you get a wife, you got a solid girlfriend, you got a solid woman, don't cheat. Don't fucking cheat. If you're going to cheat, just don't get married. Just say, baby, you know what? I'm not good for relationships, even if it's your girlfriend. I don't want to be in a relationship. I'm a fucking whore. Okay, I'm a man whore. I like loose, wild vagina. Okay. I shouldn't be in a relationship. Okay. I know, I know you like me. <laughs> I know you like me <laughs> and I like you too, but I don't like you enough to keep my Peter in my pants. And there's seven other women up the below, up the road, right. And down the street that I want to be with too. At the same time, I'm with you. Now I appreciate everything you do and you can keep putting forth these efforts if you want to, but you always just going to be one of many. Right. And if you had them honest conversations, well, any woman with self-respect and high self-esteem is going to say, OK, well, all right. I appreciate you being honest. You ain't shit. I'm out. Cool. But don't waste these women's time. Now, now let, that said, <laughs> I like to show you all this video right quick. that has been on the Internet. OK. And this is a man conversation. Fellas, I'm talking to you. I want you to hear me. This is a situation that uh, <laughs> this is not a situation that you want to be in. Check this out. Money 
It's illegal for you to hit people, Mary Bell, however you slice it and dice it. However you slice it and dice it, you cannot hit people. Hey, uh, I just found out he's been giving money to that I gave that money way more months ago. Months ago. He's been supporting her. I gave her money months ago. That was months ago. He said months ago. Yeah, she just told me to get some from. He's like, yeah, uh, car, you know, he goes like, car, it's not, it's not working, but, you know, when it comes to, like, getting close from the kids, he always asks me for money. That's why he don't have that money in one of our money. You're not hit people, Mary Bell. That's not going to happen. Look at all the stuff you broke. Yeah, but I just found out that he's been, he's been giving money to her. She punched on me. And, she punched on me and whooped on me first, though, real good too, before she could ever do anything. Then call the cops and say, "Don't say, don't tell them that I did nothing to you, Mary Bell." Hello. I'm right here, officer. Hold on, hold on. All right, all right, all right. So, fair use for that footage, by the way. So, basically, what you saw was a young brother, and I didn't put the brother's picture up. But what you saw is a young man who was having an argument with his wife, who, and her name is Maribel, and I'm assuming that she's from the Philippines, because if you know the history of the Philippines, many of them have Spanish, both surnames and first names. So I'm assuming she's from the Philippines. They have a child together. Uh, she's about 90 pounds. Beautiful couple, gorgeous. She's a beautiful couple. She's, he, he was a passport bro before we had the passport bro uh, name. But apparently what had happened was she found out that he was giving money to another woman. She found out that he was giving money to another woman that wasn't his mama. Now, we can speculate on why she tore that house up like she did and threw all his stuff on the ground. But the bottom line is, fellas, uh, you know, you know, she if you if you do that, any woman is gonna go ballistic on you. You understand what I'm saying? So again, marriage ain't for everybody. And as I tell you guys all the time, if you're a man whore in the United States, then you're gonna be a man whore overseas. If you bring a woman back over here, you're gonna be a man whore with her. Why? There's no geographical solution for an emotional problem. So if you're a simp in the United States, you're going to be a simp overseas. All right? Now, a lot of us want to say, oh, no, she's Americanized. Bro, let me explain something to you, man. I want y'all to look me deep in my eyes, all four of them. Look, look at me. All women are the same when it comes to cheating and giving her money away. Okay? Did you hear what she said? She said, listen to what's being said. She said, it, sound, it sounded like she said, that's why you haven't been able to pay the rent. Okay? Now, the mere fact that she said rent instead of mortgage indicates that they are renting that house, not owning that house, which means what? This man is not really fully established. Okay? More importantly, she stated, he's been giving money, giving her money, right, to somebody else. And he said that was four months ago. Okay, bro, irregardless, she just found out today. And it sounds to me like he got, it sounds, and I don't know what the brother's doing, and I'm not making any allegations. I'm not saying anything. But, you know, she, the implication is that he is stepping out, okay? And, 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 and if you want to piss a woman off, I don't care what color she is, what race she is, you go ahead and give your heart, give her money to some other woman and see what happens. You see, now I'm completely against physical violence in any relationship, but it sounds like dude was doing his part too. Now, here's the thing you got to understand. Y'all with me? Because I know y'all used to meet up here, giving it up, give these lovely, y'all Y'all want to see the Blizzard King. Y'all like to see the Blizzard King, you know, blow frost on these ladies, but. Look, bro, I, I need you to understand something, man. We, you know, uh, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get this Uncle D tonight. Uncle D needs to talk to the nephews. You can't be out there doing all this wild shit. I don't care what what color the woman is. You understand? 
That's not copacetic. It's not cool. It's not going to happen, especially if you're a family man with a child. All you're doing is, is, is threatening to break up the family. You understand? Now here, and one thing is, let me tell y'all something else. If you're dating based solely on a woman's race, that's not going to work either. Okay? If you say, I'm just going to date a white woman, there's some horrible white women. There's some horrible Asian women. There's some horrible black women. There's some horrible women everywhere. It just so happens if you go overseas, you might be more than likely to find more women who are ready for marriage. Okay? They're more, uh, what's the word I'm looking at? They're more concentrated in some of these different places because of the culture and because of what the culture requires. Here in the United States, it's just wide open. You know, you get, you, you, you know, it's, it's very few good traditional women. Uh, and it's a lot of women, uh, you know, who have been brainwashed by feminism, capitalism, and the American uh, nightmare that we have going on now. Right. And they've been told they can do anything a man can do. So dating because of, a, because of what a woman, you know, her ethnicity, that's not, that's a, that's, that's a bad move. Okay, women are women. And uh, and when you're choosing a woman, and again, I don't give relationship advice. I'm just giving you human being advice and, and basic shit. Uh, when you're choosing a woman, man, you look for morals. You look for the type of mindset that matches yours. Um, again, you know, she never should have put her hands on him and she never should have destroyed his stuff. But, uh, you know, you got to understand, um, you're causing turmoil in your home when you know when you when you when you giving money to other women all right and you know we can assume that maybe it was his baby mama you know maybe it was you know maybe giving money to his baby mama you know maybe that's how that's done but see here's the thing it's the reason why you know a lot of men don't like child support i get it i understand why y'all don't like child support i get that but i like child support and the reason I like child support, because when I send that motherfucking check to the attorney general's office, when they get that deposit, ain't no more talking to me. Ain't no, anything I do is anything else I do is out the kindness of my heart. Once you get that money every month, that's a wrap. We don't need to have no conversation. Ain't going to be no, I need you to put something on this and put something on that. My question is, where's that child support money? Where's that child support money that you get in monthly intervals? You don't talk to me? No, no. Go talk to the government. You want some more money? Go get your lawyer. We're going to talk about it. And see, that cuts down on your interaction with these women from your past, especially if you got a kid by. Now, I'm giving y'all some wisdom now. I'm giving y'all a benefit of... I'm freestyling, okay? I'm giving you some benefit of some wisdom here. Um, I was married. I was married one time. I got two kids. And I realized that I'm not fit for a relationship while these children are little. And so for about 10 years after my divorce, I just spent time focused on raising my children. I had some relationships, nothing too serious. You see what I mean? Nothing too major. I tried to get with my baby mama around about six, seven years after my divorce. But at that time, my children were out of diapers. They were up. They were rolling. They were preteens. We could go different places, but I was not trying to get in a relationship when my kids were small. Why? Because I knew my attention was going to be drawn to that other woman in that other nest with my kids. Even though it's my ex-wife, your, your, your current woman is not really uh, any woman with, with class and dignity is really not going to be filling a situation where she got to share you with another woman. You really hate me. You, look, let me just say it like this. Uh, no woman wants to, no woman of any class and dignity wants to come sit on a throne and there's another queen in it. If you understand what I'm talking about, that, that throne needs to be free and clear. She doesn't want to come into your house competing with some other woman for your time, attention, and resources. And the mere fact that, and if it, and I'm just speculating, if you giving your money to your baby mama, and I hope that was the scenario, I hope he was just giving money to his baby mama and not some, some side broad. Uh, you know, it, it's a situation that you can go get around by saying, no, you get that, you get your child support and that's it. Okay. You don't want to put a woman in a position where she got, where she's feel like the resources that she's earning, the resource should be going to her house is going to somebody else's house. And the child support is something different. No woman can say anything about you paying your child support. They know that's governmental. They know it's required. Nothing else you can do about it. It's something that's it's just got to be in the budget. You see, but
But you need to have that under control, fellas, before you decide to dip off into a relationship, especially if you bring in a woman from way overseas. Why? Because she didn't came over here to where you at. She came over here and she, you know, and she, you probably the only person she knows. Okay. And, and, and you doing this, this stuff. All right. And I'm going to show you another video from this, this little interesting episode that I saw on the internet. This is even funnier. Take a look. Little mama's out there with a rake. She trying to hit him upside the head. She didn't already call the police. And by the way, if, if once a woman call the police on you, that's the end of the relationship. If, if this young man is smart, he'll be trying to go ahead and get out of there. It's too late. But again, my whole point is this, fellas. Irrespective of what location or, uh, uh, or culture you pull this woman from, it's still a woman. Okay? She's still a woman. Okay? I think that some of the passport bros forget that women, no matter where they are in the world, they're pretty much the same. They're jealous. They want resources. they stingy. They could be childish. It is what it is. It's just some women give you more in exchange for having to deal with that. All right? Now, let's break this down, okay? According to what she said on the video, dude was giving money to another woman. I said it's possibly his baby mama. But the mere fact is he admitted that he was giving money to another woman. All right. Now, if he was giving money to his side chick, well, you know, you got to understand you giving money to your mistress money and you don't have enough to support your wife. That's going to piss any woman off, no matter what color she is. And him giving another money, another woman money while asking his wife for money is going to make any woman, especially wife, go crazy. Right. This doesn't justify her hitting him. And it doesn't explain why she went crazy on his things and all that. But, uh, you know, any woman is going to go crazy off that. Now, again, like I said, two wrongs don't make a right, but they were both wrong, okay? Money is one of the main reasons why marriages uh, break up. And the fact that, you know, he's giving money away to this other woman and they apparently are having some issues, that's a problem. Um, you can go overseas or in the States and, 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 and you know, and whatever shade or ethnicity or size a woman is, if you're giving the rent money away to the side chick, you about to get hit. You about to get hit with a rake, right? And that's going to be his problem. That's something that, that's a sign of immaturity. That's not something you should be doing again. There's no geographical solution for an emotional problem, all right? She said, we don't have money for our rent, right? And so what is, let's put yourself in the mind of this woman, you know, this foreign woman, this woman from overseas who gave up her life, her family, to come overseas to be with you, All right? She feels like the roof over her head and the child that they have is being threatened because he's cheating. And not only is he cheating, this is the allegations. I don't know. I don't know what was going on. It was never said she was cheating. I don't know. I just know she giving, he's giving money to another woman. But nevertheless, giving money to another woman and, you know, he was real casual about it, almost arrogant. And he admitted, yeah, I did it. You know, he's probably, you know, the only person she could rely on in this country. And she doesn't feel comfortable and she doesn't still feel safe. So now in her insecurity, she lashing out. Okay. And so this is something that, um, you know, this is something that, fellas, <laughs> That's just something that you shouldn't do. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to be married, you take vows, you, you, vows of loyalty. That's just not cool. I mean, on, on any, on, on everything, man, that's just not cool. I'm going to bring the video up again. If you guys, um, if you guys uh, can hear me hit the number one button, I'm going to bring this video up. I want to kind of break it down line by line so we can kind of talk about it a little bit so we can just, you know, just digest justice because it's definitely a learning moment all you brothers you marrying these foreign women they're not going to tolerate uh, that you know they're not no no self-respecting woman is going to tolerate that and you want self-respecting women raising your daughters and your sons so you know make sure you understand that check this out fair use now that's so that's her right there. She looked like a little uh, Asian lady. 
And he said, you shouldn't have pushed me. He said, you pushed me. I don't know what happened. I know the police came. I know the police showed up. Okay. Now I'm looking at their house. Okay. Looks like a middle-class home, typical furniture, got the wood furniture. So they average little couple, you know, doing their thing, trying to make it in this world. Um, she's a pretty lady. She looked like she in her twenties, maybe late twenties, early thirties. But listen to the conversation. Never pushed you, never hit you. This, this, this and he got the camera out. Mind you, he put this on the internet. So, this brother, you put all your business on the internet, bro. Don't get mad at me, man. I, I'm just, I'm just trying to teach the brothers. You know, uh, trying to use this uh, in a positive way. Uh, you know, a lesson that could be learned. But let's keep listening. You say you choked me. This is what she said. Now look at all this stuff on the floor. She didn't apparently. So he's telling her you came straight in and just attacked me. Kind of, you know, he real casual, a little arrogant with it. You know what I mean? That's not a good thing, man. Where'd the love go? Where did the love go? Ha <laughs> ha. Marriage. Let's keep it going. That's what you did. I came straight in. You destroyed my property. You're destroying my property. Bro, like, it's almost like he's talking to, like, a store clerk or something. You destroyed my property, bro. Y'all married. That's your wife. Y'all got a whole baby together, man. Y'all got a kid. You know, it's, it's it's not a good look, bro. You shouldn't have put this on the internet in the first place. But nevertheless, let's keep listening. Right in here, destroying and ripping up my property. Ripping up my property. As soon as you came home, you came right in. As soon as you walked in. I mean, she tore all this shit up. Let's keep listening though. She destroyed and ripped my property. This is the most high stuff. Now, I, I keyed in on that. The brother said, this is the most high stuff. So, bro, do you have a, I mean, you have a job. You talking about this is the most high stuff? Or are you, I mean, just, just let's just, let's just, listen. we know Negroes like this. I mean, let, let's just be honest with each other. Hold on, let me. I, I mean, this is the most, bro, bro, come on, bro. What kind of double talk are you giving this one? This is the most high stuff. I know dudes like that, man. The most, no, bro, that's your stuff. Don't try to put extra on it like she didn't came in there and 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 and, and, and ripped up the Bible. That's your stuff. You 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 think, oh oh, oh my God, this I'm doing the Lord's work, and here she is coming in here tearing up our stuff. I mean, the the stuff I'm doing for God. What a horrible woman. You stop trying to. You, you, it's almost like you make trying to make her feel like. Make it seem like she's this horrible person. She's a devil or something because she's messing up God's work. No, she's messing up what you're doing because you gave some, she just found out you gave some other woman some money and you ain't paying the rent. Okay. That's grounds for ass whooping in whatever culture you living in, sir. Okay. You, you act like you out here like Solomon or something, sir. And you got all the money and you can have all these wives, sir. You, Clearly, clearly you don't. She coming home and you ain't working. I don't know what you're doing, sir. I don't know what you're doing, brother, but it looked to me. It, 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 I'm just saying, and I, I support the brothers, Uncle D, down with the fellas. But it looked to me like you got a flag on the floor. Looked like a violation of me, playboy. I'm just saying, let's keep listening. Praise God. Praise God. She just looks stressed. I'm mean, looking at little mom over there. She just looks stressed out. Praise God. Hold on. Let's. Ooh, she just she ain't happy. She grabbing that hair. She got them eyes looking the other way. Side eyes. She ninety pounds too. Ooh. Mm -mm. Ain't nobody gonna put her in jail. She ninety pounds, sir. She's a ninety pound Asian woman. And them white men and them them cops show up. They gonna put you in jail. She's ninety pounds. She got long hair. She, they're going to put you in jail as soon as soon as they show up. Whatever she say, they're going to believe her. Look, let's keep listening. Just like, just like, just like, just like, just like. Uh huh. I mean, it looked like they had a good cat fight up in that house, man. Hit the number one button. So now you're going to be like, take me from your side to go hide from Jabby. He said something about you giving her money. I don't know who he said. I heard that. 
Well, who she said she was giving somebody money, but it, it was her. She said you was giving her the money. Meanwhile, they got a baby with oh my god, they got a baby in diapers, and he giving money to a side chick. Come on, man. Come on now. You cannot have a baby in diapers. And you giving money to a side chick. Come on now. <laughs> Somebody said he got his cardio on. Yeah, she came in kicking and screaming. She was tearing your ass up, dog. <laughs> I'm just saying, brother. I'm just saying. Bro, you can't do no shit like that, man. Come on, bro. Oh, man. Let's keep listening. You got a baby. We got them pampers. Oh, no. That's that That's that bootleg brand. Ain't that that bootleg brand? Oh, no. With the airdrop? No, man. You can't afford to be giving no side chick no money, man. Come on, player. Oh, that playboy. Come on now, playboy. You can't do that. Oh no, baby! Oh no, no, no! They got the little black face baby on there too, man. Y'all got a little brown. T- uh, uh-uh, uh, man. Come on, bro. Don't do it. Don't do that. Let's keep listening. Looking at fucking retarded. Looking effing retarded. She got the little hole jeans and some. See, she found out this morning. She knew that. That's why she got her fighting clothes on. These are her fighting clothes. She got them jeans on. Look at them jeans. She got them jeans on, and uh, that's what women do. She got her fighting clothes on. She knew this morning what happened, and she left, and she came back, and when she came back, you was home, and she saw you at the table. And as soon as she saw you, she went over there and just messed up everything. You That's what happened. She got them fighting I know girls when they got them fighting clothes. Some of them put their hair back like that. And whip it up like that, put it in a bond. That's just what happened, Playboy. Woo! Praise God! Praise God! You, you know what we need to do? We need to get the blood of Jesus in here real quick. This is getting a little too too harsh. We'll be right back. Under the blood. That's what they need. They need some under the blood. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, welcome back. Welcome back, fellas. Welcome back to the broadcast. Woo, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Yeah. So well, if you guys missed it, you don't know where we were at. So basically, I'm talking to the fellas about the maturity required for a serious relationship. And uh, most men need to get uh, get to a certain age and a certain experience level before they should get married. And I tell these brothers all the time, I suggest you don't even think about getting married to after you reach the age of 35. Uh, early 40s, depending on if you had to go to university or not, how many degrees you have, because you really never had a chance to live. Shout out to Freedom MMC, bro, on that Tiger Woods simp lifestyle. Yeah, man, he, he dripping, baby. And uh, my thing is this. Uh, no matter where your woman is from, okay, if you are going to be, and this is the scenario that's going on here, if you giving money to another woman, all right, you giving money to another woman, uh, what's going to end up happening is you're going to piss that woman that you're with off, especially if you marry, especially if money is tight. That's just not kosher. That's just not something you should do. Anybody with good sense will tell you that that's not cool. That's not going to happen. It's going to cause conflict in the relationship. And the more conflict that you have in a relationship, the more you erode the love that's in the relationship. Now, I do talk about that in my books. I've experienced that. I know just what it was. You all there fighting all the time. That's dysfunctional, especially fighting over trivial stuff like that. 
And you know, you just it's just not the time. You wasn't married. It's it's time for old buddy to go ahead and cut his losses and get out that relationship. Okay. Now that said, big shout out to uh who, who just before shout out to Freedom MC. Thank you so much. Uh let me see who else we got up in here. Uh Cody Ma. See, I can tell when you brothers are mad at me. Y'all ain't y'all ain't contributing no no super chats. Now, if I was in here talking about how horrible this woman was. Y'all be kicking in, but y'all need this. Y'all need these. I give out bricks and bats, okay? And these are some bricks and bats that we're going to give out, brothers. This is this is learning time. This is maturity time. Why even get into a relationship? Again, there's no geographical solution for an emotional problem. You got to make the determination of whether or not you should even be married, okay? Some of us shouldn't be married. All right, let's just deal with that. Now, let's go ahead and get back. To this video footage it is very let's see what else this young lady has to say revealing tidbits of information let's keep it listening call it what you want to call it but you can't hit people if you're mad he keeps saying you can't hit people you, you can't <laughs> she hit you bro you come home as soon as you come home i'm on a zoom meeting and you just leave me. I'm, I'm on a zoom How, well hold on a minute that baby that's the five level so y'all got a big old baby that's that five right there. That, that's them five pampers. You know, the one pampers is for the babies and the two, and then that's the toddlers. And then the three, you got a five. That's 70. You got a man. You better not get no money away to no side chick. Come on, bro. Don't do that. Look at them pampers on the, on the, on the damn counter. Let's keep listening. Do that. That's something you're not allowed to do. It's illegal. Oh, it's illegal. Get all your money. That's why we don't have no fucking money for the rent. For the Ooh, did you hear what she said? You gave her all your money. That's why we don't have no fucking money to pay the rent. She mad. Shout out to Jamal Smith. He said, all love, Uncle D. Thank you so much. Uh, you right, Uncle. This is priority issue. Bad man no give bad. <laughs> bad man no give bad bad money for pum pum. When him lick and pick me at home. Yeah, man. Yeah, Ross. That's what me say, you know. Hey, bad man, you don't do that, man. You know, it's a wrong thing for, you know. Don't do this, you know. Anyway, I'll be faking Jamaican up here. Shout out to all my Jamaican uh, family down there. I'll be, I'll be faking a Jamaican accent for you. Shout out to my man, Senyok. See, I'm a learn to say this. Senyonka. Senyonki, thank you so much. Let's keep listening. Let's keep listening. Playboy said what? What? A, I want to run that back. I want y'all to hear that little tidbit of information. That's very revealing. Re, very revealing. We don't have no fucking money for the rent. For the mortgage. We don't have no money. It's illegal. You, we don't have no fucking money to pay the rent. And you doing what? Giving money to the other bitch? Playboy. Come on now. And you got caught? I mean, it's a lot of married dudes out there that have been doing shady shit. They ain't got caught. I mean, it's some y'all know. Y'all know them shady ass. You see them in the club more than you, and you single. And they don't never get caught. You don't know how she do it. Damn. Simple Shit TV. Cody Marshall, thank you so much. I know about them islands. Yeah. But but this dude got caught. And I'm not going to sit up here and tell you how to cheat. I'm going to tell you don't cheat because that's moral advice. So a lot of, a lot of, well, you know, no, I'm not going to tell you how to cheat. I'm going to tell you brothers don't cheat because again, like I tell y'all, I'm going to give y'all the same advice that I give my, I would give my own sons. I want you to be morally upright men because I want you to maintain the moral high ground because as the man of the house, you should be able to dictate the terms of how that house runs. You are the moral authority of the house. You just can't come in there, you know, like some kind of dictator and you're an immoral. God don't support that. You got to be to that woman what Jesus was to the church. And morality is the most important thing, fellas. I'm just keeping it 100 with you. Y'all don't have to like what I say. I, I know you're mad. <laughs> I know you're mad because you ain't hitting the like button. I know you're mad. I know, but it's okay. You need this. And I love you, brothers. And I'm not going to ever give you advice that's immoral. Shout out to Keith Williams, Kenneth Williams. Thank you so much. Let's keep listening. Imagine if this was your daughter right here, man. Your daughter then went all the way to goddamn America with some black uh, uh, gringo. And, and he giving money away to some side. Got, got her knocked up a couple of times. And he giving his money away to some, some side broad. Some broad he could have had. He ain't had to come over to America. He didn't have to come over to your country and pick you up and bring you out there for that. You could have kept her in America and had her and left you alone. You understand? 
But all this is just a problem. This is all insecurity right here. She's, he, she, he's breeding insecurity in his house. And if you ever want to have a woman that's, that, 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 and when a woman feels insecure, fellas, man, it's going to manifest in a lot of different ways that, that, that are going to be hard for you to read. Keep listening. And he got the nerve to get mad. So let me tell you something. Else. Let me get up close. I, I got to say this shit too. And I'm going to actually tell you ladies something. Sometimes these Negroes will get mad. White men too. They get mad when they get caught. They mad at you because you caught the ass. <laughs> you caught the ass cheating. And then they want to get mad at you and want to fight with you because you caught them cheating. And they want to go off on you. And they ass was cheating. Ain't that something? Look, I'm going to tell you, if I was an advocate for women, I would be wearing you motherfucking dudes out. I would be whooping y'all ass every night on the internet. Y'all would be angry, angry as hell as me. It's not that I think men are perfect. It's not that I think black men are perfect. It's just that we got so many people whooping our ass and talking shit about us and putting us down. I say, damn, I need to defend these dudes. Y'all like, I'm like a goddamn public defender out here defending you Negroes for free, man. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like nobody else will do it. I guess I better do some shit. So I'm just down here trying to defend y'all for free, man. That, But but if I if I was... If I was defending women, I'll be lighting you motherfuckers up for some of the trifling shit you doing. You motherfucking Hennessy drinking ass motherfuckers riding around here with rims on your goddamn car at 38 years old with your hat back, pants sagging. I'll be lighting y'all asses up every day, every motherfucking day. But again, I don't do that. But every now and then, we need to have these honest conversations because this was so far out the realm of normality and because of the passport bro situation i want you <laughs> i want you brothers to understand this is a straight up violation okay uh so let, let's keep listening let's keep listening man and he's still on this you can't hit people you can't see he's recording this video for the police right but let me tell you something and, and dusty nuts said the book of dennis y'all niggas is <laughs> <laughs> he said the book is Dennis, the book of Dennis's and y'all ninjas is cold, but they busted. Yeah, man. Shit, I ain't got no daughters. But if I had a daughter, I'd be like, but girl, I told you not to marry that motherfucker. Bring your ass to the goddamn house. Shit. And bring the grandchildren too. Shit. We put your room back together for you. Uh Arrowhead said, leave these hoes alone. Right. Let's, 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 he's still talking about, hey, you hit me. You hit me. You can't hit people, bro. It's a rap, bro. Nobody's going to be on your side, bro. Nobody's going to be on your side. You giving money to the side, bitch. Ain't nobody going to be on your side. It based on what's being said here. <laughs> you sitting there doing the Lord's work and giving your money away to the side, bitch. Come on, man. Them two things don't match. You all morally upright sitting at your desk all studious and shit with your little wooden chairs. Doing the Lord work, she come in and tearing that shit up. Ah, uh, uh, bro, nah, bro, you ain't gonna get off that easy. Look, keep listening. It's illegal for you to hit people, man. It's illegal for you to hit. Well, she ain't gonna get prosecuted. Let I tell you that now. Let's keep going. However, you slice it and dice it, you cannot hit people. Somebody said, "Imagine Cynthia G collab collabing against a." Yeah, I'll be wearing y'all. Y'all will fucking hate me. But, uh, you know, like I said, I'm an advocate for black men. The truth is, as a lawyer, I can, I can argue both sides. That's what I'm used to. But again, the reason that I'm an advocate for black men is because y'all don't have nobody else. You understand? Black men, black boys, you don't have nobody else. That's why I stick up for you. And I teach you how to defend yourself. I ain't going to do this shit forever. God damn it. Y'all cheat, too. So I ain't doing this shit forever. Y'all don't pay enough. Uh, but anyway, let no, just kidding. Shout out to everybody who can check who, who in the chat room, man. But let's keep let's try to learn. Let's listen. I gave that money away months ago. He keeps saying, I gave that money away months ago. Okay, so you hid it for four months, bro. She just found out now you still gave her money away, and y'all can't pay y'all rent. She mad, player. You understand? Keep listening. Months ago. I gave her money months ago. You said you supporting her. That was months ago. You said months ago. I mean, she really tore that shit up. Look at the house, man. Look, all shit is everywhere. Let's go. Yeah, he, he 
Now hold on, she looked like she on the phone talking to somebody. I don't know if she's talking her Filipino native language. Let's see. Hold That's on. why he don't have that money and he about money. That's why he don't have that money. You cannot hit people, Mary Bell. That's not gonna happen. Look all the stuff you broke. Oh, she breaking glasses and motherfucking wedding gifts and everything. Damn. You got the Holy Bible. Look, you got the Holy Bible right up here. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. God. Just out his being, his being. She threw the Bible on the ground and everything. I already called up. I already called up. I already called up. I already called up. Broke his little headphones on the ground. Let's keep listening. She punched on me. And, she punched on me and whooped on me first, though, real good. So before she could. He said she punched on me and whooped on me real good. Yeah, bro. You know, you you kind of you kind of messed up, dog. I ain't gonna even lie. You you kind of you kind of messed up a little bit. I ain't gonna. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to tell you. You, you didn't gave the money away for the rent to the side bitch. Okay. And then your wife found out about it. What who you want to feel sorry for? Shout out my man Black Filipino TV. That's why Uncle D is a goat. I'll reach out to your emailer for an interview. All right, cool. Cody Marshall said he got the cardio in for Yeah, he was wrestling the tiger that night. Shit. Y'all think these little Asian women are docile. Don't you realize that every martial arts ever created that we still use right now started over in somewhere in Asia? Shotokan, Muay Thai, Kung Fu, Judo, Jiu Jitsu, all that shit. Do you think these people are passive? Or are they just calm than a motherfucker? <laughs> That's what it is. So you, they calm. Them. If, if there's a section of the world where all the fighting arts started, don't assume that the people over there can't fight. Okay, all of them are fighting. They just calm with your ass. But what happened today is old buddy got a piece of that white tiger. She leaned into his ass. That's what happened about that rent money that he gave away to that side chick. Let's keep listening. Never do anything. I ain't doing. You did something. Talking about you ain't do nothing. You did something, sir. Sir, you gave you gave the rent money to the side piece, sir. That that, that ain't. Mm -mm, that ain't working. That's not gonna do go over well, sir. Don't tell them that I did nothing to you. So now the police is at the front door. She done called the police. Okay. So I don't know what happened, but for the most part, this relationship is a wrap. Okay. Unless he can get her back to the Philippines some kind of way where she can't call 911. But clearly she's Americanized to the point. <laughs> Well, she know I can call the police on this black ass nigga, get his ass put in jail. And, and, and let me tell you something, even if she don't have her papers, here's a little legal moment for y'all. Even if she doesn't have her papers, if there are allegations of domestic violence, then what happens is she can get a temporary uh, 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 permit or visa to stay in the United States. So if she's alleging that you whooping her ass, and basically what's going to happen is the police are going to come in that house and you can't keep them outside the house because they they have a reasonable suspicion to believe that a crime has been committed. And so they are probable cause to believe that a crime has been committed. So they don't need a search warrant to come in your motherfucking house and they're going to see you in there cleaning up all that shit with all that broken glass. And they're going to be able to deduce from the facts that the scuffle took place. OK, now, if there's any evidence, any bruises on her little arm any scrapes on her little face, anything like that, they're going to put your ass in handcuffs and take you down to the hooskow. At least that's what they should do unless they cutting you a break. Nevertheless, that police report will be sufficient grounds for her then to go apply to the State Department and ask for a temp. You got to move out. We're going to file a divorce. And this is grounds for her to ask for a, 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 a different kind of visa, which will allow her as a victim of uh, of domestic violence, harm to women, stay here in the United States. Fuck you. And she can take the kids. 
and she can get child support. And if she wants to get you put out the house, that's a law in the books. Donald Trump was trying to get that overturned. I, I've been watching that very close. Let's keep listening. The police at the front door for y'all who missed it. Hello. Look, look how she changed. Hello. She changed her whole voice up. She went from angry tiger to kitten. Listen again. Hello. Hello. You heard that? Hello. That's how she going. Yes, this big black man just whooped my ass. Look at the look at the house. He's been trying to clean it up over there with the Bible. Mm-hmm. Yes, Lord. Let's keep listening. I'm right here, officer. I'm right. The officer know where your black ass is, sir. You know where you are. He saw you. People just say, hey, you know how them cops come to your front door as soon as they get there. They're like, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. They got their hand on their gun. Hello. All right. Yeah, bro. Look, you fucked up. <laughs> and I'm not laughing at the brother, man. But like I said, some people shouldn't get married, bro. You shouldn't have got married. And I, I mean, you're not ready for it. You understand what I'm saying? And that's just it in a nutshell. So here's what we're going to do, man. We're going to take a little break. We're going to come right back. All right. I need you guys to understand that marriage is not for everybody. All right. But in the meantime, look at this funny ass shit. My women, brothers, brothers. these same women that you're willing to put your life on the line for. That's the white man's job. He created them. That's why I tell you brothers all the time, if you want a black woman, go get your real one. Why do you think these women are so quick to side with the white man when it's time to call the police on your black behind? Really? Why do you think we have such a high abortion rate? They don't like your black ass. Really? Why is there a movement online right now saying a, 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 a abort black baby boys? A whole movement. Why are they wearing weave and bleaching their skin trying to look that white, look like that white woman? Mm -hmm. Despite that you tell them they look better with their African cells and their black cells. You damn near got the KKK sleeping in the bed with you. KKK Keisha. Wow. They're the main ones talking about fighting white supremacy and the main one enabling white supremacy. Wow, we are. Oh. These same black women talk about the black man oppressing them and manipulating them and controlling them. What was your mother, Attorney Sperling? They act like the word submissive is a dirty word. What was but your on mother? The first side for them is to flex when they go date the same man that looks like the men who oppressed them during slavery oh, and oppression. I'm tired of this. What was your mother, Attorney Sperling? The, the level of delusion is incredible. So your mother was delusional. These are sellouts, brothers. Huh? And I thank God that the Most High in this age is exposing them who they are. You are trash. But more importantly, brothers, there is no way, there is no way you can produce a strong, confident, proud son, a proud African son, a proud black son with a woman like that. Or a woman like your mother, right? God has cursed her womb to so only be able to produce the very men that she that hates. you're cursed to, Attorney Sperling. And that is a horrible place. Well, blackmail oh, so child. Horrible. Shut up. Beat. Shut up. Ah, welcome back to the broadcast. Shout out to my man Dusty Nuts. He said the book appeared. Uh, ye shall use thine ebony stick to be thrusted into the earth so that the water will flow. And then there was peace, everlasting bliss. Amen, amen. Shout out to Deacon Dusty Nuts. Thank you so much, sir. But anyway, man, y'all remember these hoes matter. Diaz hoes, which means come here in the Basque language. Remember that. That's the terminology that we use. But anyway, uh, anyway, let, let's go ahead and proceed. See, the, 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 fellas, let, let's just talk. Where my passport bros at? Shout out to all the passport bros. Type passport bros in the chat room. We got the passport bros. I know we got some plantation bros up in here, and I know they laughing their ass like, see, we told y'all. This is not a passport bro thing. This is a young man who forgot that he was who he is, no matter who he's married and who he who's with. Okay. All right. The thing, let me let me help you guys understand. The fact that 
women from overseas know that guys in the U.S. travel to these other countries to meet them already gives them the inclination that you need something that they have. You understand? Okay? In these relationships, right, that girl that you think you captured, right, she actually captured you for her benefit. See, some guys have foreign wives that are controlling, that are money hungry, and sometimes very whorish. We've heard the stories. I know a couple of guys who met women from Brazil and Colombia, and they brought them up here and brought them to the United States, and they start they they came out the bag and they start whoring and doing all sorts of stuff. Had a whole bunch of other dudes. It is what it is because they're all women, okay? The good and the bad. Right, so even if you meet a woman from another culture, you still are going to have to deal with her human nature, her personality, her traits. Shout out to Wrench Turner. Okay, he said uh, to the cliffs. Right, <laughs> right. There's no land angels, fellas. They're still women. Human nature is universal. Some of them seem to think. Some of you brothers seem to think that finding a woman who lives or who, who has traditional values is all you need, right? That's just the beginning. There are other things you got to deal with. Again, are you even ready to get married? You got a woman with traditional values, but you're a man whore. You got a woman with traditional values, but you don't have enough uh, patience, wisdom, knowledge, finances to be a traditional man. You got to ask yourself these questions, fellas, especially if you're going over there and you're trying to vet these women on your own. See, they already believe that you're going to these foreign places for tricking purposes. That's that's the word on the street. Many of you have good intentions, but unfortunately, some of us don't. Some of us just want to go over there, sleep with all the whores and come back to the United States. We just go over there and get our rocks off. We get that. But people are oftentimes going to equate you with the lowest form of morality that you perform when you get there, right? Think about it. Think about cats eat other things than rats, right? But we always think about cats eating mice and rats. We never think about them eating that expensive-ass cat food that you get in that, that aisle on the top shelf at the grocery store because you always associate cats with eating rats and birds and bats and all that. Same thing with black men. They associate you with coming over there tricking on hoes in the DR, tricking on women in Brazil. So that's the presumption that they have on you. It's not a good presumption. They're trying to work against it. But the bottom line is they think you're coming to their country and they need, they, they're, they're there to use you, just like you're there to use them. It's an equal exchange. But if you're getting a woman with traditional values, it, it's worth it. And that's what a lot of American women don't. Well, they're trying to figure out, well, what is this? What do these foreign women have that I don't? Y'all, and, and for the American women listening to, especially black American women, it's not that these women have something you don't. It's that they're willing to give something in exchange that you're no longer willing to give. And that's what? Cooperation, femininity, uh, uh, youth oftentimes, and, 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 and submission in exchange for what the man typically gives, okay? Now, um, when you're dealing with these women, right? And I'm talking to you guys at this point, uh, I'm in my late 40s, I've been through it, okay? Uh, you, gotta, you, you gotta look for more than just a pretty face. One thing I used to do, man, is I used to try to, crack jokes sometimes just to see what the woman laugh at so I can kind of see her personality. You know, and for the most part, I only dated black women. So my thing is I crack some jokes to just see what hood level she's at or what kind of men she hung around based on the jokes that she laughed at. Okay. Now uh, you got to pay attention to whoever you date. You got to pay attention to their behavior, their reaction to questions, and more importantly, the shit that they disagree with. I would ask them, you know, hey, you know, how you feel about Kevin Samuels? What do you think? I mean, you know, most of them going to say, well, I didn't agree with everything he said, but he has some he has some very good points. That's a that's a moderate answer. If she just blow up on you, oh my god, that's that's a problem. But uh, my man um uh 
Deacon Dusty Nuts came back through. He said again, he said, the songs of Holloman, two and three. <laughs> the songs of, oh my God, we need a, bro, you need to write a book. The songs of Holloman, 213. The sun set upon the iron chariots for the second exodus. The soles of their feet touched the clouds upon their journey. They graced the soil of the lands of 100,000 palms, and they were given kings welcome. Amen. Amen. Thank you so very much, Deacon Dusty Nuts. Brother, we appreciate you. <laughs> but anyway, y'all bored. I know this is bored. Y'all don't like to be lectured to. I know y'all much prefer me get up here and rant and rave about these hoes. I know, I know. But you need this conversation because I want you brothers to be married, but I want you to stay married. I want you to have successful marriages. And one of the worst things you can do is get married too soon when you're not ready or get married to the wrong type of woman. These two things have to come together for a man. You got to be ready to get married and she got to be the right type of woman. If you're not ready to get married and she's the right type of woman, you're not going to marry her. That's why a lot of good women can't understand why these men who they met didn't marry them. And then they turn around and break up with them and turn around and marry another woman. Because when he met you, he wasn't ready to get married. Okay. Now, no, other women say, well, why you don't want to marry me? Because you're not the right type of woman. Those two things have to be in place. You understand? He's got to be ready to get married, and she's got to be the type of woman he wants to marry. When those two things come together, that's when, that's when those relationships happen. Again, some of these men are not ready to get married. I'm telling you, we got a whole bunch of man whores out there to go with these, these woman whores. All right? And even if they ain't man whores in their mind, uh, uh, in real life, they're man whores in, in their mind. So you drop them off somewhere. Now they got their passports and they can go overseas and they got women. They, they, they at the top of the social status because of their American identity and their passports. They're going to be man whores for a minute. You know, and they just not ready to get married. All right. Now let's keep, let's keep it moving. Y'all with me? Hit the number one button if you're with me. All right. The other thing you guys got to understand, everybody puts on a good front at the beginning, right? Uh, you know, when you, when, what the old people say, when you courting people, right? And so what you want to do is you want to learn as much as you can about them. You want to observe their behavior. You want to uh, observe how they act with their families, how they interact with others, how they interact with waiters and hostesses and strangers, children, dogs, cats, animals. You want to do that. And, it, and, and that is something that you want to do wherever the woman is from. She could have traditional values, but she could be an asshole. She could treat waiters like they ain't shit. She could have a superiority complex. That ain't cool. You understand? Remember that. People have the potential to pretty much do anything. What does that mean? That means that very woman, that, that traditional submissive cooperative woman that you brought over here from the Dominican Republic or Thailand or Philippines, once you bring her to America, she has the potential of turning into one of these Western women that you were trying to run away from. All people have the potential of pretty much being anything. A nice kid can grow up to be a tyrant. All right, there's potential there. We are very similar, we human beings. We're very similar. And so you want to examine this person. You want to look at this person very carefully and try to figure out who you're dealing with. Like, you know, uh, you know, really generalizations don't apply. You got some Asian women. We, we generalize black women. Yeah, hood ass bitch. I met some hood ass Asian chicks. I met some hood ass Dominican Latino chick. Hood is everywhere. Ghetto is everywhere. They might have a different term for it. Now we do have a higher degree of ghetto motherfuckers over here, right? Uh, but the reason is, is because, you know, that's part of our culture at this point. Now, some of you all are saying, well, Uncle D said, keep them over there. Yeah, but most of y'all not going to keep them over there because you can't afford to keep them over there. You can't afford to stay over there like that. Real life happens. And let me tell you what's going to happen. You're going to realize you're tired of them cold showers. Okay, not everybody. Some brothers can deal with it, but it's a very select few group of men who could just stay, move to a foreign country where they don't speak the language, where they weren't raised and just stay there. That's a very, that's few and far between. That's a small percentage. The vast majority of you dudes are going to either go over there or wait for a woman who is from another culture to come here 
or immigrate here and then marry her. And you're going to be making uh, uh, decisions based on her race and not her character. And that's going to be a problem because you're going to end up with the same thing you get now. And that's the trouble with generalizations. All of these women are women. They're all the same. They all have the same nature. Okay. All right. So, so you're trying to simplify the whole passport bro movement down to they're going over there, uh, you know, purely for the ethnicity of these women. And that's oversimplistic. Right, dealing with women based on her race and her location is foolishness, especially if you're gonna move her location. She's gonna act just like the other women act. People are who they are because of their upbringing, right? They, they, but but what happens when the environment changes? These are things you brothers need to look for, okay? And if you're doing passport, bro, it should be because. If you're doing passport bro because you're looking for a wife and not just have a good and not just to have a good time, you should be looking for a woman with with a traditional mindset, not a modern woman from a different nation. Now, you know, this brother apparently on this video, you know, I really don't see where she was at fault. Like whether she's a traditional woman or not, if you giving money to the side bitch, it's going to be a problem, man. And you just need to understand that. My man, Lamar Black Attack, keep up the work, Uncle D. The fellas need to know the foreign women are very jealous because most are serious. Serious is what we want and serious relate. Yeah, that's true, too. You wasting her time. Like I said earlier, you done brought this woman way over here, away from her people. You the only person she can depend on. Apparently, they got two kids. Y'all still renting the house. And your ass is giving you, you right there writing psalms of you goddamn psalms for the most high. And the rent ain't paid. That's not going to go over well, no matter where you are. Okay? And she down to the point where she calling the police on your ass, which means she done talked to somebody, probably a lawyer, and realizes if she can get some paperwork on you for DV, she can stay there with the kids and get the domestic and, and get that DV, that DV uh, 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 permit. Okay? She can get that DV green card. All right? You can't go, you can't go, another thing, fellas, you can't just go over there and pick one. Can't just go over there and pick some random woman and bring her back, right? You need to go over there and you need to be uncomfortable for a little while. You need to uproot your life and live over there. You don't know anything about these people's culture. You need to learn about the culture. You need to learn how the men in their culture interact with the women. You learn how to meet the expectations of the women there and conform to that culture. So guess what? Now when you bring her back here, you can hold her to the norms of her culture. Now, if the brother was in the DR and he was with a woman from the DR or the Caribbean or something like that, would them dudes be cheating their ass off? Okay, maybe he, he could say, well, I expect you to understand if I have side chicks. But apparently that's not what was going on and that wasn't understanding. But again, this is America and my best, and I'm gonna tell you guys again, I'm gonna keep on telling you, don't cheat. If you're married, if you're in a stable relationship, don't cheat. Just get a new relationship and get out of that one. Let's be honest. Huh? You know, we can see how a lady talks, how she carry herself what her values are. So it's not a mystery. You don't have to go to another country to look for that. Right? You you got a hood rat. You 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 don't went overseas and brought an ex uh, prostitute back home. Bro. And you trying to make a housewife out of that? You could have got that down the street. I'm just saying. See being attracted to a woman, having a pretty woman, that that's great. All right, that's great for your dick. Let me just say it like that. Having a beautiful woman with a nice body, that's great for your dick. But if she's a whore and she has no morals, that's horrible for your peace of mind and happiness. You got to look past the beauty. Look past the booty. <laughs> okay? All right, I'm just being honest with you fellas, man. Looks are all, I mean, I'm just saying this. A lot of you dudes are doing that. You're going overseas, you're lazy. You're meeting these chicas off the street. 
You know, you're picking these whores up. You're trying to make relationships with them. I'm just being honest with you, fellas. I know what you do. I know y'all be on some hoe shit, right? Even you dudes who are going over there for 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 good intentions, you still picking up the low level fruit. And what I need you brothers to do is is recognize your value, and a lot of that comes with what recognizing that that you have value, recognizing who you are as a man. Again, there's no geographical solution for an emotional problem. So if you got self-esteem issues in America, you're going to have self-esteem issues other places. And those are the type of women that you're going to tolerate. Women who are low-hanging fruit. I'm not like that. You should always want to seek the best. I tell my sons all the time, when you walk in the room, look for the best woman there. Look for the best all-around woman in there. Don't look for the low-hanging fruit. Don't take the leftovers. Shoot high. Aim high. Okay? Um, See, even if you go a place where they have women who are overwhelmingly have a traditional mindset, the other thing you got to understand is that Western culture is everywhere. It's nearly everywhere in the world. Uh, It's the effect of social media. Look at my brother. Where my African brothers at? Where my people from Nigeria and Ghana and Zimbabwe? Where y'all at? Where my African brothers at, man? If you go over there, you'll see they're having a lot of the same problems that we're having here in the United States with black American women. Not to that extent, but still. And it's a result of social media. You can find a woman in those countries um, who's absorbed as much of the worst that the West has to offer as any woman here in the United States. And, and the whole modern woman moniker, it doesn't have any racial or ethnic barriers because it's an acquired mindset that is prevalent throughout the Western world and throughout the world in general, but concentrated in the Western world. So it doesn't matter if her name is Zing Zing, Marisol, Shaniqua, or Becky, Becky uh, you know, one, it, it's everywhere, okay? And the other thing you guys got to understand, your woman could be, she could be foreign, speaks no English. Once she gets a taste of this American way of life, this freedom at all costs, they're going to act differently. They're going to change up on you, okay? And and so so don't be surprised, fellas. And what a lot of Americans need to understand, a lot of you fellas need to understand is that about some foreign people is that, um, you know, a lot of them, they're going to change. They're going to become a lot more self-entitled when they get here. And you don't know who she's going to be. Now, the one benefit of having a woman who is of foreign descent in the United States, because she was raised here and she's had a chance to be, uh, she's in tune with her own culture, her own native culture, and she sees American culture. If she makes a choice to be, you know, more traditional, then you got somebody who who's already inoculated to that. So that's a win for you. You know, you you got somebody you can work with. Um, but once you bring a woman back and she turns into a modern woman, a modern Western woman, uh, that's what you're dealing with. And let me tell you something else. Those other women would do their very best to try to destroy and cor- corrupt her as fast as they possibly can because they don't want all that traditional woman values around here because that means their husbands and their men are going to expect them to step their game up, and that's not something they want to do, right? So a lot of men, you know, they tell you don't bring them back, right? They'll tell you stuff like your money goes further, your dollars go further over there. They'll tell you to learn the language. They'll tell you embrace the culture and keep it pushing. I'm with that too if that's your option, but, you know, I just want you fellas to be happy. And so we're just talking about your potential options. But again, don't cheat. Because that's going to get the woman, even if you come from a culture where women are cool with men having a lot of other women, they still don't like that shit. Who wants to share their man? Now, name a woman in the, in the world who wants to share a man that she cares about. Okay? That's it. Think about that. Now, if you want a traditional wife, but you don't want to give up your Western lifestyle, then going overseas is not, is not going to be for you either. Because, look, I mean, the whole point is to take your education and your cash and go start a new life. And you also need to be offering something of value so you can get the best women over there. But, again, if if this is not something that's for you, you can't get used to the cold showers. 
you can't get used to eating the food that they eat over there, that's not you. And guess what's going to happen? You're going to be right back over here with us, fellas. All right? You passport bros, you need to be careful with your selection. Remember, right? If you're a kind person, I want you to hear me, fellas. This is another lesson. If you're a kind, giving person, that does not mean you're going to attract kind, giving person. Some people tell you stuff all the time. You attract, what do they say to you? You attract the energy you put out. That's the type of people you attract. No, motherfucker, that's not what you attract. That's why a bowl of sugar attracts a bunch of flies. Okay? A bowl of sugar attracts a bunch of flies, and it also ba- uh, 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 attracts honeybees. But see, the thing is, if you was raised by a, a fly, then you're going to have a tolerance for that fly. Now, if you want a honeybee, then you're going to have to change your whole mindset. See, this is why kind people attract narcissists. See, these narcissists prey upon kind, giving people. Not that the kind person is a narcissist, but the narcissist will have you believing that you're the narcissist. They'll gaslight you so much. So throw that out the window when they say people, oh, you know, uh, people, you know, you attract your own energy. No, 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 you don't. That's bullshit. That's not what you attract. You can, you can be, you can look like, a, you can attract a predator, a female predator, women, you can attract a male predator because you look like a victim. You understand me? Lions repel each other. Big ass lions, they stay on their side of the savannah. And, but, but guess what? Them lions are running after those gazelles because they, they're, they're predatory. You understand me? See, some of these philosophies that people are throwing out, they ain't lived enough life to tell you. I done lived enough life for about 10 men. And so now I can tell you what works. I done dealt with pretty much every kind of woman personality wise that you can deal with from the supermodels to the hood rats, you know what I'm saying? To the super educated broads, uh, to the bitches that straight off the block, to the twerkers, you understand? Uh, from the bitch working in the drive through to the one working in the corporate office. <laughs> so, or the one running the, running the company. And so the thing is, man, you just got to be careful with all these women. And it don't matter where she's from. You know what I'm saying? Um, again, like I said, just because you attracted someone doesn't mean they're good for you. So be careful your selection. A lot of you brothers, because of the way you was raised, we talk about this all the time. Your mother, basically, she wasn't shit. And you tolerated her and you loved her. So you have a, a place carved out in your psyche that allows for you to tolerate ain't shit women. Okay. And that's just that, that that's, that's what you're dealing with. So what you got to do is you got to totally change your perspective. Even if it goes to the point of writing down things like writing down what you want, what you don't want and, and go through a list of things. And if a woman doesn't meet those qualifications, that's not cool. Now, if you're going to have a whole bunch of superficial shit, the bitch got to have a million dollars to be able to fly like an Eagle. And, 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 you know, and, and swim like a dolphin, you might not meet you, but it's some basic stuff. How you want her to be is good. Okay. Um, you know, if you don't vet her properly, most likely the signs were there in the beginning, you just ignored them, you know? And, and, and as a man, you have to, you have to dictate how you want people to treat you. And again, let me say this. I don't give relationship advice. I just see this. Shit. And the reason I don't, cause everybody got a different take on it. And the truth is, you gonna like what you like. Some of y'all like hood rats. Some of y'all like whores. I'm just gonna be honest. You like a you like a twerking ass whore that's gonna make you a goddamn fish sandwich on Sunday Sunday morning, and, 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 and ride you like a cowgirl. That's what you like. Cool. Have what you like. The world, the time here on this planet is relatively short. Like what you like. But when it comes down to marriage, that's not something you should be playing with. All right. And in addition to that, if you are gonna have a girl that you're in a relationship with, that's not something you should be playing with. Cause see, the more we deal with these women and we mess the good ones up, then they go over there to the dark side talking shit. And then they got all their friends over there talking shit about us. So we're not helping the problem by dibbling and dabbling and messing up these, the, the, the few good women that we have less. Now, one thing I will say, disrespect is always a deal breaker. No matter how good she looked, no matter what country she is in. Now, of course, you got to give give um, a little leeway for the cultural norms, but for the most part, you know disrespect when you feel it. Now, some, a lot of women understand this, 
especially foreign women. I want you to hear me. A lot of them can play sweet and nice for years and then they strike. Okay. One thing I used to do is I used to put a bitch in a position to figure out who to get that mask down. See who the fuck I'm dealing with. Take her drinking. See what come out. Take her to a club with a bunch of balling ass motherfuckers at. See if she don't be flirting around. Just watch her. Okay. Take her gambling. Okay. See how impulsive she is. Get a little liquor in her. You see what I mean? Take her to the, you, you want to see, you want to expose this broad before you deal with it. I don't care where she at. All this stuff that I'm telling y'all on this broadcast is all universal. You don't have to have game. You let, you let them show you who you are. That mask going to come down if you get a few drinks in it. See, that mask is going to come down when you get her gambling. That mask is going to come down when you set her around a bunch of ballers and see how she performs. It's going to slip off. You're going to see it, right? A woman is always going to show you who she is if you put her in the right situation. A few drinks to do it. Some other, a little too much, you know, take her to a concert. See how hard she screamed for the nigga up on the motherfucking stage. Right? Just sit back and peep. Peep her out. Okay? Just peep her out. Don't say nothing. Don't comment on it. Just peep it out. Be subtle. But you'll see it. It's there. You understand? Just, just peep it out, fellas. Now, again, I don't get relationship advice, but this is just how this shit go. This is something. If y'all had uncles and daddies who had experienced the world like I have, you'll see it. You could have a you could have a broad, she got a master's degree and a PhD. You get a couple of shots of that. That that white that white lightning in her, that Patron, take her to one motherfucking concert. You can see who that broad really is. She gonna show you who she is. Mm-hmm. Them shoes come off. She get to dancing and moving around like that. Oh, okay. This she was a turn up chick back in the day. How many bodies you got? Oh, I'm just having fun. Then next she apologizing and shit. Ah, right, bitch, I, 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 you you show me who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I see you. I see just who you are. I get it. <laughs> and you ain't got, but that's who she is, man. So don't trip on that. All right. That's who she is. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right What's back. What's up, folks? This is Dennis Sperling. I come live from my villa down here in the Dominican Republic. I think the thing that separates me from a lot of, of, of guys on the internet, I give you my. I give you my opinions based on my experience. I don't talk to you in about theories. I basically talk to you about memories. Most of you guys that follow me are in your 20s or in your early 30s. And um, I know there's some guys close to my age and then also um, older. It'll be the year that you enter into your prime years as a man from 35 to 55 are your prime years before that you're still just babies you don't even know enough about what it is to be a man to make adequate decisions because you're not basing most of your thought processes on um, logic and reason a lot of what you're dealing with is your emotion Specifically, until your hormone levels drop, you're pretty much thinking with your uh, your penis and not your your logic, not not with your brain. I use this page to try to you know to try to give men hope and also give back advice that I wish somebody had given me. You got to figure out what kind of man you're going to be. You got to figure out your spirituality. What is it that's going to keep you moving uh, when times are tough? You know, what what is that extra bit of umph that you're going to use to get you through the tough times?
All right, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Welcome back to the broadcast, fellas. Hope y'all appreciate that. Yeah, that was my villa down in the DR. I uh many of you guys just got here. Y'all missed all that. That was uh before COVID-19, before I got in a relationship. And uh y'all can thank Kevin Samuels for that. Old Kevin Samuels is the one who convinced me to uh try try American women again. So I'm happily in a nice relationship with a beautiful woman. Um, she's going to be a lawyer. She's uh in law school now, finishing up. So, you know, I know what I'm talking about, man. And I've been out there, Uncle D out there. <laughs> I've been way out there, you understand? So I'm not talking to you guys from a place, I'm not talking to you theoretically. You know, I I I I, you know, from the supermodels to the actresses, a lot of these bitches y'all fawning over. I done been around them, fucked them, had a good time with it, and moved on. You see, and, and 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 so, but I can do that on my level, you know, because you know I got the money, I got the social status, you know. But the main thing is, man, I, you know, like I said, I'm not talking about theoretical shit. I'm talking about real shit. And when I tell you guys, motherfuckers out there married and cheating, I'm telling you that's that's what's going on. You shouldn't have fucking got married, you know. And I'm not, and I'm just trying to keep it 100 with you fellas. But I don't want you to go through the same shit that I see a lot of other brothers going through. A man, CR said, Uncle, Wi Uncle, Uncle Wisdom, I got a dime on the rent. That's what's up. Thank you, nephew. I appreciate you, brother. And, and I don't want y'all to see y'all going through. I don't want y'all going through that heartache. Because see, what's going to happen, if old buddy is smart, he's going to have to get a divorce. And we're talking about the video that we saw earlier. Because they're at the point where she's calling the police on him and they fighting like cats and dogs. You know, that physical abuse. That's physical abuse. Right. And the thing about physical abuse is it's only going to get worse over time. And so when you're dealing with a woman and you're abusive, y'all boxing each other and fighting each other, it's better to just leave and stay. You got to cut your losses. You know, some you got to cut your losses and that for both parties. Some people pretend to be nice. And then when 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 the shit get real, then they start. They show their true colors. You see? Uh, it, it it would be they show their true colors, man, and uh and there's there's always warning signs and red flags if you see them, but but it is what it is, you know. And and after that starts, you got to go. My man Dusty Nuts says, speaking of Kevin Samuels, it'd be great to see the brothers go on that panel. Uh, KS Day, the brothers wear a shirt and a tie or a sweater to show some respect. Yeah, man, that'd be nice, man. You know, y'all organize that. I'm going to do a little something over here for uh, Brother Kevin Samuel's birthday on um, on Monday coming up. But uh, just to acknowledge the brother's passing. But uh, the main thing is, fellas, you know, you guys got to realize, again, like I say, once the physical abuse starts, it's a wrap, okay? It's just a wrap. You got to let it go. Relationship is over, okay? It's time to move on. Move on, move on. Now, um, here's the thing. You shouldn't, like I said, um, well, let me let me say it like this. You see that stuff early on, okay? You see it early on. It's there. You ignore the red flags, but you should have a zero tolerance for both physical abuse and disrespect, right? You, you got to always be willing to walk away. See, what happened with that young brother is he failed her shit tests. And that's why she's throwing his shit all around the house. Okay? There's some dudes that give money to other women, and they women know they can't get out of pocket about that. That happens. But he wasn't handling that situation like that. And I'm not saying you should. I'm just saying you can condition another human being to deal with anything. That's why it's dudes that got six baby mamas and they working on seven and eight at the same time because they know how to condition women and other human beings to tolerate this. It's just a conditioning process, but he doesn't have the depth of knowledge, patience, and understanding to be able to do that, nor does he have the power, influence, or sway over this woman. You know, I mean, just look at it. I mean, you see the situation happening to them, right? And for those of you guys who are not familiar, I'm going to run this video one more time so y'all can understand where we're coming from. You shouldn't have pushed me. You shouldn't have hit me. 
Oh, you didn't hit me, you didn't push me? You never pushed you, never hit you. This you, is, you this is all my stuff destroyed. You fucking choked me, you fucking it's choked me. all my stuff destroyed. You, you came straight in. You fucking choked me. You came straight in and destroyed my property. That's what you did. You came straight in here destroying my property. Straight in here destroying and ripping up my property. Yeah, so we don't need to run the whole thing. Y'all get the point. But the thing is, fellas, understand. Okay, hear me out. Um, you know, at the point where y'all putting hands on each other, and I tell women all the time, if you even play like you want to fight with me, I'm out. Right? You don't allow a woman to put her hands on you, and you don't put your hands on another woman. If they even play like they putting their hands on you, you leave. You leave, you never look back, you move on. It don't matter if you're married or whatever. Don't play those games like that. Now, the thing is, I want you to understand something. Um, most women expect this, and this is pretty general, right? So I'm going to generalize. They expect protection and provision in exchange for submission and cooperation. And if you want, to, you want a woman to respect you and submit to you, again, fellas, and I'm going to reemphasize this, you want to maintain the moral high ground. All right, you got to get this woman something to respect. All right, you, 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 this is what they should submit to. And a lot of brothers, and I'm talking specifically to black men, a lot of us expect women to bow down. You just expect them to bow down to you. You expect the Lord over these women. And that's a young man's mindset. All right? They want you, you want to be able to tell them what to do just because you said so. From the starting date, the bitch got it. Y'all, you've been knowing the bitch a week and a half, and you got her in the kitchen cooking and cleaning. You getting wife benefits and uh on a baby mama budget or a side bitch budget. You know what I'm saying? And that's just not how it works, fellas. That's not a mature attitude to have. Now, if this man was well, this gentleman was taking care of his bills and doing everything else. He might he might have got a different kind of uh, response, but this man is getting no respect from this woman because he's not taking care of his bills and he's giving money to a, another woman. You know, yeah, she was wrong for hitting him, but, you know, that kind of stuff is always going to affect women negatively. You aren't, you know, you're, you're not going to have women or anybody who wants to follow you if you're exhibiting poor leadership in the first place, right? And all good leaders have a proven track record and they're constantly reproving themselves because the terrain changes, right? And they'll rely on the fact that you've been a good leader in the past, that you'll be able to get them through these, navigate through these new territorial waters, so to speak, all right? But again, like I said, and what I'm saying is that record that you earn needs to be constantly maintained. So when new shit, you not, nah, it's not going to work. I hope y'all get that. That went over a lot of people's heads. All right, y'all with me? Hit the number one button. Y'all bored as hell? Let me know if you're bored. I need to know. I can do some other shit. Um, but again, I think black men need to focus on leadership skills, fellas. And whether you're going to be a father or not, I think we need to focus on leadership skills and less on demanding submission but focus more on leadership skills because if you are going to be choosing women from overseas, that's all fine and dandy, but those women are going to want good leaders too. Okay. And proven leadership must come first. And then the submission is going to follow. What woman wants to follow some asshole? That's why men typically are the ones that screen the uh, husbands and sons want to screen the men that our daughters choose to be with. Because we check these dudes out to make sure they, they're up to stuff. And, uh, you know, again, one thing in common, I want y'all to understand this, and you can be offended if you want to, uh, you, you know, fellas, I know, and I, I and my good, the, the brilliant BGS may disagree with me on this, and I've heard him speak on this subject before, I, and I always defer to BGS Ibmore because he's one of the most brilliant people on this page. Um, but he brought up something in one of his most recent broadcasts. And y'all definitely need to go check that brilliant man out. He is he is a mainstay here on on on, on YouTube and male centric YouTube. Um, you know, um he is of the opinion that you should get married. Um you sh you should get married to help you 
raise up your financial status. And that, that sounds good, right? I'm of the opinion that broke motherfuckers don't need to get married, okay? That's my opinion. Men who haven't proven themselves to be able to be providers and protect, you don't need to get married. Where do I get that from? When I was a young boy, I read a book uh, about Shaka Zulu, the great Zulu king, the great Zulu warrior. You guys probably know him from his, um, the, the, the series that came out in the 80s. Shaka Zulu. Type Shaka Zulu in the chat room. Where my African brothers at? Where my South African brother? Type Shaka Zulu in the chat room. Okay? So, um, he was a great general and a great king, and he would not allow men, warriors, to get married unless they had proven themselves in battle and gotten to a certain age. So here's what he did. How did he, and, and on top of that, if you had sex with a young woman and she became pregnant, that could end up in your death or, you know, or you could be punished severely. So if you look at some of these African tribes, how do you deal with all those hormones until these men are able to prove themselves? Well, there's a dance where the men and the women come forward to each other and then their they genitals touch, I guess, and the woman squeezes the man's parts between her legs and then they fall back and they go forward again and they fall back. It's a dance. It's like a ceremonial dance. And what that does is this is Zulu culture. And it allows for the men to be sexually aroused, the young boys to be sexually aroused and ejaculate at that time during this dance. Okay? Look it up. Read it. You know, don't fight with me. Read the book. I'll get the book next time and put it up here. And so I'm like, wow, that's a, wow. Mind you, this civilization is hundreds, thousands of years old, or thousands of years old, or at least hundreds, I guess, you know. And so in, in, in place of getting married, the young men did that for, to fulfill their sexual needs. The older men who after fighting many wars and having proven themselves, they were the ones that are allowed to get married because they've already proved themselves to be protectors and providers. There are many other cultures around the world who mimic that. You don't let some young girl marry some goddamn fool who, who don't know who he is as a man yet. How can she submit to a clown? And I'm not saying young boys are clowns and there's always exceptions to that, but I knew who I was and I see what's going on out here right now. Okay. And, and again, universally speaking, men, women don't want broke, unaccomplished men to be with. You need to have some fellas. Again, submissive submission still comes at a price, whether you're in the United States or whether you are somewhere else, submission still comes at a price. And realistically, women need to feel secure in their committed relationships before they can submit. If he's sneaking around, sharing resources um, with other women, then how can she expect him to number one, and, and they broke, how can she expect him to cooperate? Or how can she, how can he expect her to cooperate? It's not gonna happen. And, and, that, and that's the fundamental problem with that situation that I saw there. Uh, nevertheless, thank you guys so much. I, I want you guys, I'm a, we don't have a whole lot of time left, but I got a little quick treat for you guys. Cause like I say, man, this is, um, I don't give relationship advice, but you know, I, I'm an original passport, bro. Before they even called it passport, bro, this is, you know, this is what I was doing. This is what I was hanging out. And uh, I put together this little clip, man. I, I, I just want y'all to check it out just so you can, just so you can check out and understand that, you know, Uncle D is a real deal. You see, I'm not, I'm not faking this. This is, you know, I, and some of you guys who've checked out my music and my albums, you, you understand all of that stuff that I talk about. Those are my real lived experiences. So I'm talking to you guys. I don't give relationship advice. I give you advice man to man, because I know that um, I know y'all need to hear it. So uh, this is just a little something I put together. But in the meantime, man, 
I kind of showed you the intro to the intro before, but check this out and we'll be right back. I'm gonna actually open up the chat room. We got a few minutes. I'm gonna bring some guys in here. Y'all check this out. We got a few minutes, y'all come on in. Uh, the link will be in the chat room shortly. Y'all make sure y'all hit the number one button. And also we having a subscription drive. So make sure you subscribe to the, to the, to the channel right now, but we'll be right back. wasn't it that wasn't it y'all let me <laughs> my bad my bad i got to looking at that i'm like that ain't the one i man you know anyway y'all y'all hit the number one button man we'll we'll get this together uh but in the meantime the link is gonna be in the chat room in about 15 so did y'all enjoy this broadcast is this i know it's a little change up y'all not used to me getting on the brothers but i do and uh i do this from time to time because it's just something that's absolutely necessary a lot of you brothers don't have older successful men to speak to. And uh, I get that. And you can sit up and bitch and complain uh, about these bras all day. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, women are pretty much the same everywhere. Okay. Uh, but anyway, the link is in the chat room. Join the conversation. We got a few minutes to get some folks in here. I will take a quick break. Uh, we'll put a little something else up. We will be uh, right back. After these, uh, we're going to let the Jesus come in and pray on this. We'll So we got a couple of brothers down here in the bullpen. But before we get them in here, I want to make sure you guys have visited my merch. Right, Go to DennisSperling.com or DennisSperlingMerch.com and y'all make sure y'all check out my merchandise. We got some new T-shirts up here, a lot of uh, fan art. And some of you guys have been asking for this one. So, bam, there you go. That's um, It's going to be the Blizzard King fan, a villain to some, a hero to most. Anti-hero fan art, man. Look at that, man. I got that. I got me out there looking menacing, and that's actually an AI version of my own face, which is crazy. And here's another one right here. So we got the T-shirts. Put yourself first, fellas. If you don't hear nothing else, I tell y'all, y'all make sure y'all do that. Put yourselves first because it's necessary when everybody else is putting you last. And here's another one here. I think you guys will really like this. Not only just T-shirts, but they also have hoodies. The Blizzard King, man, my fans did this. I love my family, man. Um, and somebody said, Rules to Live By is a gym. Yeah, y'all, make sure y'all get the books. You can always get the books. But uh, and um, the quick way to get to my, um, the quickest way to get to my guys page is just to simply go to YouTube, okay? Go to YouTube, go to my channel, all right, let me blow this up for you guys. Go to my channel. Let me see if I can. I don't know. It's a little bit of a delay in here. Um, let me see. Give it a minute. It's a little slow. 
No, let me get this up here. And then just go to the part where it says store. Click on store, and that'll ch- take you straight to my website. You can click on any of this stuff, and it'll run you in there. But nevertheless, this is what we got going on. Please let and, and when you get the when you get the you got um, iPhone covers, you got sweatshirts, you got coffee cups, you got baseball caps, you got all this stuff. I think this is a pretty cool hoodie right here. A villain to some and a hero to most. So y'all make sure y'all go over there, man. I'll actually put the link to my um I'll put the link right here in in in, in the chat room. We'll pin that up so y'all can go over there and visit, check out the merchandise. But in the meantime, man, we got a few minutes for some fellas who want to come through. If you guys want to come through, Sigma, uh, Sigma Black Ronan, what's up, brother? How you doing? Oh, can't hear you. You got to unmute yourself. Sorry about that. What's up, my man? I'm good, man. I'm good. Always good. We had another brother who was in here early. If you want to come through, come on back through. We don't have a whole lot of time, man. And look, like I said, um, I don't want to. I, I I don't. The re I don't blast brothers. I don't put brothers on blast. I don't put black men on blast. I don't put men on blast because we got enough men doing it. But in a situation where you giving the money to the side bitch and you got bills to pay at the house, it doesn't matter what color the woman is. She's gonna be mad at that. Oh, and that's yeah, just absolutely. Basic, that's just absolutely. basic common sense. And uh, you know, fellas, you know, I I don't, you know, I don't, I don't even think there's a dispute. But the good thing is, man. Uh, Sigma Black men often can take criticism. It's just the women that can't. But anyway, oh, what, no. would you, yeah, what, would can't. Like what would you like to add, brother? Um, I just want to piggyback what you just said about um you giving money to, off to other women. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, just men doing that. And if you don't want women to give the coochie away. <laughs> the culture, you, you know what I mean? It, it, it's really kind of like it's it's kind of similar thing. Uh-huh. If you don't want a woman giving the culture away, and then why are you giving the money away? My 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 grand my uh grand aunt, when she was mm-hmm. alive, she we, we used to have these uh, really deep conversations at night sometimes. Um, and uh, mm-hmm. she said something really profound to me. She said to me. I never cared when her she never cared when her husband had side pieces. She says it always came down to like mm. what he was doing. Because in Haiti, is it's you know, men sometimes have has, you mm-hmm. know, they are, I would say half the men have side pieces. Right. right? It's a normal thing, it's part of culture. Mm, okay. And um and um yeah, yeah. the one thing that was a big problem, it was never him having a side piece. It was him spending money when you have them didn't have the money to spend on the side piece. That means little man, little woman is going without. So now she's gonna raise hell. Mm. She's gonna literally burn your world yeah. down because it's not yeah. because you have a side piece. It's the fact that you're taking resources from the house to go mm-hmm. do some nonsense. You know what I mean? And another yeah. thing is, why yeah. for, my, for my for my grandfather is. The most masculine thing you can do is be honest with yourself and know where you are in life. The most masculine thing you can do yeah. is when you could just do self-reflection and realize where you are. Like me, I self-reflect. I spent 10 years legally blind. Money mm. down, you know, I wasn't doing well at all because I was legally blind. So Okay, yeah. So I had to assess my where I am. Where mm-hmm. I am, so now I'm catching. You know, in my thirties, I was supposed to be working on being established. Now I'm in my in inter. I'm now I'm forty, and I'm working on being established. So yeah. I have to yeah. assess my situation and be raw and be honest. I'm overweight. I'm overweight, which I'm dropped. I've dropped the weight, but I still got a lot more to go. And okay, and I you have to men. You have to be honest to get the results you want. You got to sit there. You got to look in the mirror and go, okay, where, where where's my flaws at? Where's what? What am I? And you got to look at your something. Got to look at your bank account and go, okay, what, what, what yep. am I doing wrong? I'm debt free yep. now, and I've lost weight because oh, wow. of self reflection. Yeah. yeah, man. I mean, yeah. And, and the thing is, and I kind of, I kind of brought it up when I was talking about 
you know, brothers getting married and like, you understand what I'm saying? Like, it's all magical and shit to say, oh yeah, everybody should get married. Some people shouldn't be married. You're a fucking man whore. Don't get married. Don't waste some girl's life. Don't, don't, don't do it. Just don't, I, I mean, do you understand? I, that's harsh to yeah. say, but I, you know, yeah, I my, just well, don't even understand that. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I'm going to be frank. My dad yeah. should have never been married. <laughs> I love him. Yeah. I love him. God bless his soul. Um, I, I wish he was here in this world. Yeah. But uh, I look back, and again, as a man, you sit back and you re you assess everything. You take the emotions out. And you assess everything. And go. My dad would have been better off not being married. My dad right. would have been better off not being married, and because he just, he just, he 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 just couldn't handle it. He just right. couldn't handle like 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 his my my grandfather his father his father had eleven kids he was dutiful my my maternal grandfather same thing I had two mm -hmm. examples of marriage mm -hmm. and when yeah. I look at when I take that and I put it up against my dad those two marriages with my dad it's like damn wow. my dad really fell short I love him wow. I love him but he fell short yeah man. Let's get uh, Timothy hard in here for a minute. Timothy, Timothy what do you, you, no, we don't have a whole lot of time. I've been trying to keep it under two hours. We might be over. You, Man, got, a little, you got a little feedback in the background, but go ahead. Yes, sir. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Hey, man, uh, you know, I had to, had to come up rep represent for the light-skinned brothers. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I always call you Cousin D because, like I said, I'm a, I'm a, I got you by about uh, four or five years. But okay. uh, first, I'm going to... You know, in, in the tradition of the old Black Baptist Church, I want to give a give a fella his flowers while he lives, man. Uh, right. You're doing a great work. This is the the depth of wisdom that you that you're giving to us uh, collectively, man. Th thank you. Um, I'll praise you for the most time. Uh, and the reason why I'm I'm taking it that angle because if you look at this. Uh, Passport Bros slash SYSBM slash Manosphere. Things can take a, a one slant or the train can get the, the locomotive can start going downhill and it's not, you know, as they say, uh, hard to slow it down. But what I love what you've done tonight, at, at least, is that you've given us the flip side of the coin. Everything is not the, the, the sole answer is not in getting any passport, going and getting a Chica, a Tika, uh, I think the Tikas are the Central Americans. What everybody else is Central. I mean, uh, uh South America, your Chica. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, that's that's not it. Not when you aren't right. And I'm so glad you brought that out. It takes a lot of wisdom, uh, some lived experience because you know, as that video um, shows us, hey man, you 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 can't you can't be out here. I'm gonna use a I'm gonna use a Dallas slash Houston term. You can't be out here rolling dirty, man. Like <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Can't be out here, can't be out here doing 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 the food and expect for uh things to turn out turn out right. It just is it's, it's not that not that simple. And thank you for bringing uh bringing that that to the forefront tonight that hey you you gotta uh you you gotta move as muslim brothers would say as a righteous man mm -hmm. and and you gotta uh, uh, live accordingly you have to have a moral high ground uh you have to take the moral high ground if you want to be the the man in in uh, in charge my dad I, I always used to talk about uh there's a verse and my dad was a pastor preacher so okay you have okay. To, you have to forgive me. I use all those old ch church idioms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I used to always talk about, uh, uh, I think in the King James Version, it says something about Abraham commanded him his house after himself, which means he was the head mm -hmm. of his household. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, my parents were uh, were were baby boomers, so you know he had that that was steeped into them. Even in the Jim Crow South, hey man, you still had to be. The, the man, the man yeah. of the house. And if you can't um, step up to the plate, I'm only, it's not even necessarily a, a, a asserting yourself as you just got to be that, yeah. in my opinion. You just, right. just got to step up to the plate and be, uh, be a man, be be a masculine man, be the man of your house. Mm -hmm. And again, man, let me land the plane because I keep going on, but that was, you did a masterful job, cousin. 
Yeah, appreciate it. Mm-hmm. So the thing is, you got, you got a little echo from a mutual while I speak. But uh, something that you guys don't know about, but with those of you guys who read my books, Rules to Live By, you know this. But in the time after I got divorced, and from 2010 to about 2018, I read the Bible extensively. Not only did I just read it, but I researched it. I would literally, my office would close at five. I would be in my office from about five o'clock, I mean, five o'clock in the evening to sometimes well up to 11, 12, one, two o'clock in the morning, researching the Bible and translating those biblical lessons into the books. See, the reasons I refer to my books as rules to live by is because when you begin to live life and you examine life and you analyze the word of the most high, you analyze the word of God. And that's why I give all praise is to the most high. All my wisdom that I've attained that I'm able to give to you all comes from the most high. That's why you've heard it before because you've heard it from them old people who studied that Bible, even though they might not have known the proper name to pronounce the Lord. They might not have known the difference between a Christian and a Baptist and a Protestant. Protestant. They knew that word. And so you're hearing your grandfathers and your grandmothers and your great grandfathers and your great grandmothers and many of the prophets who came before us coming out of me. Not that I'm a prophet. I would never put myself on that level. I'm just a fool that was able to read the Lord's word, take it and apply it to my life in these books. And that's why after each and every chapter, I give you a biblical reference to show you that the rules that I'm suggesting that you should live by are also printed in that good book. See, a lot of folk got away from the Holy Bible and I'm not a Bible thumper, Timothy. I'm not a pre, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a PK. I'm not a preacher's kid. But I know wisdom when I hear it. I know truth when I hear it. The reason that my channel is growing, the reason that I have so many of these people angry at me for the truth that I'm speaking, because we are in a fight, a spiritual fight. It's not just about the physical. We're in a fight for our spiritual lives and our salvation. And we as African-American people, those of us who call ourselves foundational Black American, those who call ourselves uh, Haitians, all of us who are, who are away from our homeland of Africa. We're lost, all of us. I don't care if you're in Haiti or Brazil or whatever, that's not your land. Those are not, that's not where you came from. And so the thing is, because we're lost, just like a lost child, we're more susceptible to, we're more susceptible to strangers. We're more susceptible to strange doctrines. And until we get back to what the Most High wants from us, we're gonna continue to be lost. But what I put out in that world is what I've learned. Again, and I studied the I studied the Bible like it was a law book. So if I saw a word that I didn't understand, I dug a little deeper. Well, what does this word mean? I went to that, that they kind of, they got this thing called a Bible for source. And you can read about that and then read a little deeper. Actually, two years ago, when I first started doing this, I actually went through the Bible and I started giving biblical lessons. You know, every Sunday I, I stopped doing I remember. The Hebrew Israelites was mad at me for doing that. I'm like, all right, I don't want y'all coming over here with your sticks, hitting it you know, <laughs> with my garage and shit. Leave me fucking alone. No, no, shout out to the Hebrew Israelites. But but the bottom line is, family, the wisdom that I give to you on a nightly basis is wisdom that I've interpreted out of the most out, out of our out of our, our the Bible. Uh I I do I have a great influence from many of our great leaders. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Muhammad, men who study the Bible themselves, whether you call them Muslims or not, and, and I apply it to what we're dealing with right now. And so it's interesting that you notice that. But yeah, I'm fair-minded. You know, I can see things both ways. I know we got a lot of ain't shit men out there. I fucking know that. I, I'm not blind. I can see it. Hell, I'm one of them. As a matter of fact, until recently, you understand what I'm saying? So I got me a woman. I'm as ain't shit as the rest of them. But, but this broken vessel with all the trauma that I've experienced as a young man, with all of the, 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 the wrongs and all the misguided steps that I've taken, I got the wisdom enough not to want to lead y'all down that route. And that's why I don't tell you, I don't tell you that. I'd say, hey, that's where you are now. 
you want to go sleep with a bunch of hookers in the DR, go right on ahead and do it. But you got to grow out of that, brother. That's not a that's not a permanent lifestyle. That's a phase. You understand? Uh, a lot of these great men, Moses had his phases, didn't he? You see what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. And, and who else had their phases? All of them. Joshua had his phases. We know Solomon had his phases. Oh, definitely. Some of the, what, what was the king? He slept with he slept with the queen. Killed a man and took his wife. I forget his name in the Bible. Uh, king uh, King David. He had his phases. He was a whoremonger too. But God mm-hmm. took them, and He gave great wisdom to him, them, and they were able to transpose that and give it to the people. That's what I'm saying. And mm-hmm. just to prove to y'all I ain't shit, before we bring the next person, let me show you some of my ain't shit. Shit that I used to do right goddamn now. Don't don't get up in here thinking I'm holding. That's not me. We'll be right back. Right now, she and I are negotiating. I'm trying to get her to do some dances for me. Some of them sweet, sexy, Latina booty dances. Shit, I goddamn told you. Don't put me on the pedestal. I'm just a humble servant of the most high. But uh, anyway, like I said, fellas, <laughs> the shots of Jamal Smith, I noticed that I'm slowly finding my way back to God. Yeah, you know, I, I was out there. I'm talking to you guys from experience, and I had plenty of opportunity, plenty of fine women. Did y'all see 
that's just one that might have been one or two trips of the of the of the hundreds that I've had. Remember, I was flying overseas once a month, staying for about two weeks every month for the past seven, eight years. You see what I'm saying? I had a villa in the Dominican Republic. I had a condo in 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 uh, Bogota, Colombia. I would fly from Houston, fly down to uh, to Dominican Republic, hang out there for a week, fly over to the drive down, or have my taxi driver drive me down to Santo Domingo. Mind you, I'm 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 smashing. I'm just all beautiful women everywhere, just fucking gorgeous, everywhere. Right, and then I'm not my my situation wasn't like yours. I would order my women up from like Santa Domingo. I ain't meeting no street meat. I'm gonna order the baddest bitches in the country to come meet me in my villa. But I could call that, and you know, the, from the point that I get, man, my maid would let women in. I'll come on in. I mean, I got four five bad bitches in the house. I mean, I got some pictures I can never show. They just in there, everybody's walking around naked. I'm just sitting there on the couch with my toes up and shit. They in there cooking me some food in the middle of the night. And I got four bedrooms and a pool and a jacuzzi outside. Yeah, I was out there bad. And what I'm trying to tell y'all that life, that ain't what it's all about. I'd much rather have one good woman, one good solid woman that's down with me, that's cooking clean, that's respectful, that's kind. I'm good with that. All that shit. But you got to go through the whole phase, fellas. <laughs> At no point in the 10-year time period, after I got divorced from my ex-wife, was I suitable for marriage? Let me say that again. Uncle D was not marriage material when I was fucking all them random hoes, okay? I was just not good for it, all right? It just, my bad, you know? It is what it is. And when you can come to the realization that most of your fucked up relationships are because of you, <laughs> and you can realize that, look at the first book that I wrote. I want y'all to look at that first book, Rules to Live By, that black book. What do I do? I, Despite all the shit that I said my ex-wife did, I accepted 100% of the fault for why my divorce, why my marriage failed. Why did I do that? Because the oh. only way you can learn is if you begin to accept the fact that you're the problem. Now, <laughs> y'all might say, well, damn, man, your ex-wife did some foul shit. She did some raw shit. I married the bitch. If I, if I, do, if I, whose fault did it? You bring a, look, 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 man. Look, you bring some dynamite in your house and that shit blow up. Is it the dynamite's fault? Or is it your <laughs> goddamn fault? Your <laughs> dumb ass brought the dynamite in the house. You didn't see what's goddamn dynamite when you brought it? I know it might've been tender, it might've been dry. Your dumb ass brought it in the house. That's okay. your goddamn fault. You choose who you marry. You choose who you lay down with. You can't blame a bitch that you ran after and chased after and was trying to get with when she blow up in your goddamn face. That's your goddamn fault. It's you and your dick that need to have a conversation so y'all can make better decisions next time. You know what I'm talking about? So what I did was I accepted 100% fault for every bullshit, all the bullshit that happened to me during my, my, my marriage. I really start reading that Bible. I remember I'm down in Brazil, Brazil on some whole shit in 2010, fresh out of my fresh out of my goddamn marriage, reading the Bible, about to go fuck with some hoes at a the thermal, reading the Bible. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, you know, it wasn't like it wasn't a smooth trend. Look, it, it wasn't a motherfucking qu a break. It was a smooth transition. It's like cooking a turkey. You can take right. all day. It can take all goddamn. I got the Bible in one hand. I got some bad bitches coming over there, and they're like, "Oh, we, I throw no bang, yes, baby." Bang, all that. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to spend all motherfucking day in the thermal. I'm gonna be tired and dried out by the time I get back to the Bible. You understand? I'm a little shitty ass. You see, some people like to stay in the Copacabana and all that. No, I stay in the little shitty ass off-brand hotels that don't have no rules about how many hoes you can bring up and shit. I had a Q dog friend come down there with me. I had two fine bitches with me. And we was my my floor was on, and he'll tell you his mother. Let me tell you, I'm I'm on the third floor. He on the second floor. Mm -hmm. I got two fine bitches I done brought with me from the club. I've been setting this shit up. I'm over here like you know, I'm moving my hands together. I got two of them, and uh, I let him dance with one of them. But you know, she was coming to my room with me because I had I had I was gonna relive some shit that I did with these same two broads a couple years before. I write about it in the book. 
But anyway, I, I'm going with the bro. I look back and he done snuck off with my, my bitch. I'm like, hold on a minute. This is a pair, sir. He, I tell him today, man, you still owe me a bitch, man. You <laughs> I tell, I call him up right now. I tell you, 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 you stole my bitch, man. Q dog, don't fuck it. I'm an alpha man. Don't them Q dogs are steal your bitches. I'm just tell you that now. Keep them right away from around your house. Uh, uh but then shout out to all the minimal mega sci fi man. But no, I, I didn't have some good times, man. And I needed to get that. If, if I, I'm just being honest, but I needed to get that. I spent my first 27 years of life, 28 years of life educating myself so i never really got a chance to fuck around and fuck up you see what i mean two years out of law school i decided my dumb ass decided oh well it's time to get married because that's what they tell you to do right mm. go to school get a job you know get married live the american dream but ain't that what they tell you motherfuckers they told me the same yeah. shit. shit don't work out yeah. it don't work the out dog like with the picket fence, still, right? you're still a whore in your mind <laughs> now you got money you got resources you got time you got this education and your horse ass is locked in the marriage. That's how them niggas get fat, start drinking beer, watching football every goddamn Sunday, just, just waiting to die. Like, this is it? No, what you should have done, shout out to my man Dusty. No, he said, the book of Temptation 6 9. <laughs> he embellished the fruit of the land and tasted the dew. And the dew was good. Amen. Hallelujah, brother. <laughs> yeah, man. I, if, if I really had a conversation with y'all, my uncle D is a whole nother kind of funny. Y'all can see it. But I don't say it because I know people will use this shit against me. But, yeah, man, I had a good motherfucking time. And y'all should, too. Shit. I hope you young brothers get your money together. You know, travel overseas. You'll grow out of it. You'll, yeah. you'll, you'll eventually say, okay, I done fucked all up. Oh, wow. Shit. I don't even know bad bitches kind of fuck. Yeah, you know what I, I mean? I, I, I ain't going to front. Your 40s is a... I'm, I'm so happy I'm 40. Yeah. I'm so it, it, same here. It, your energy mm -hmm. is so different. You mm -hmm. you just so much clarity. Mm -hmm. There's so much clarity, and it really don't start to begin until you're 35. Yeah. But when you hit 40, wow. it's a whole different ball game. So I tell the young guys all the time when I do have a chance <laughs> to conversate, get your fucking out. Get yeah. your fucking out. Yeah. Survive, yeah. It. Survive, it. Survive it. Survive it. Keep it calm. So, so. But trust me. You will, you know, especially the dudes that not fucking. So the guys mm -hmm. that not fucking, that not you know, that that don't fucking. Yeah. Trust me, I know that the, the testosterone can make you sometimes depressed because you want to fuck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't do anything stupid. Don't do anything brash. Don't self delete. Well, well, hold on, the one got D Hub. This you man, you on the motherfucking phone right now. I know it's midnight. Remember that? Remember that time we was down in Brazil? I know. I know. I know, I know, I, I know, nigga. Just hold on, man. Remember that time we was down in Brazil and you stole my bitch? Uh, remember that? Remember that time? Come on, you know I got a black man. I'm a respectable Negro now, right? You know I got a suit on and shit. But I was Never just forget. telling the thousands of people that follow my. Tell them that time you stole my bitch. Remember that? Remember that? Go ahead, tell them. Tell them don't don't hide now, D. Uh, go ahead. He ain't got no internet. This is how he ain't got no internet, no YouTube. You still there, D-Hub? I'm in my library. I'm in my library of voice. I can't you in your library? My library voice? You know when you're in the library, you got to talk low? Bro, bro, uh, tell the truth, man. I, tell the truth. Hey, hey, I have company, sir. I will call you tomorrow. What? No, I don't fucking call you. <laughs> tell him about when you took my bitch. When I was going upstairs, hey, if there was, hey, this, if you did, then it was, what, it was 20 something. Sir, you, sir, sir. Sir, peace and blessings to you. Peace Don't be pleased, with goddamn <laughs> peace and blessings to me. You took my bitch, you still out in the bitch, man. She was trying to catch up on the internet. And she was, and she was high, too. She was rolling all night. She's smoking that weed and popping them pills. I, I know what you did, D Hub. I know what you did. I'm going to go and let you go. I'm going to go and let you go. Praise God. I'll talk to you later. I'm going to change that. I just want, you've been a bad influence on me for years, D Hub. You and your cute doggedness, you brought me down. And I'm I'm reclaiming myself. I've been telling them all night how I used to read the Bible. And then you'd be like, come on, let's go fuck around some bitches. And I'd be like, bro, that's the end. That's the end, <laughs> hub <laughs> Shout out to me. Man. Shout out to all the fellas up there. You need to get your good cute dog friend. All right, bro, man. I appreciate you, bro. I believe you, love, man. I hit you up next, later on, man. All right. <laughs> All right, yeah, he hung. See, he got a bitch over there right now. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> like they get, that's what it is. Don't get it twisted. The hub. I mean, we was hanging out one time, man. And we was we was watching. That's back when Mayweather was fighting, like every couple of years. And so we would go to this spot over here right off of Beltway 8 in Houston. And I know y'all ain't come here to get all these old ass stories, but, uh, you know, and I'm, and I, this is when I had that big blue Cadillac. Have y'all seen my big blue Cadillac? That yeah. I, that, uh, yeah. Yeah, I've so, seen uh, So we go into the club, man. This is probably about 10 years ago. And uh, D-Hub got this big old bitch. I mean, she's a big, a big wide back. I was... <laughs> Big high I mean, ain't nothing redeeming about her. I'm like, D-Hub. D- and D-Hub used to run track. You know, he was a slender. I shouldn't be saying his name out here. Random Q-Dog used to run track. And uh, I'm like, man, I ain't say nothing. That's your bitch, man. I wish I treat her like a queen. Man, would you like some champagne? I just fuck like, would you like stuff? But I got standards. I can't fuck with no big old bitch. That's my back hurt. I got to slip this in my lower back. Like, Let me the phone right there at L L four L five. I can't handle big old. Oh man! Uh, But my my man, Big Boss, real talk said, "Damn, Uncle D, love you." But she, uh, she was Brazilian boss. Used to, yeah. But I had one with me. I had one, but I was gonna have two. You see what I'm saying? But he, I'm going up the stairs, and I look back, and she, I'm thinking he helping her up the stairs because she knows she a little, she been rolling, and she, you know, that's what they do down there. And I'm like. Brazil, that's why I don't fuck with Brazil. Brazil's a part. Don't you gotta have a good heart. You gotta be in great shape. Don't fuck around in Brazil. You better go somewhere light. That, that, that's what I'm trying to drop the weight. That's what I'm trying to drop the weight. Have, look, bro, I <laughs> you gotta be a special kind of motherfucker to hang out in Brazil, especially Rio. I can't do it. I need some light shit. I, I'll go to Medellin, I'll stay in my hotel, I'll eat some steak. You know what I mean? But Brazil, that shit will drag you under. That's like that's like goddamn. It's like it smell like sex when you get off the airplane when you go down to Rio. It's like nah, I'm good. So, get to get up out so of here. So it's New Orleans on steroids. No, nah, it's no, nah, it's a whole different. If you've never been to Rio de Janeiro, mm-hmm. you just don't understand. I can't explain it to you. But what happened? We was in this little bullshit ass hotel, right? Because if you stay on the Copacabana, they don't let you have the bitches come up. This is a snooty place. They got Canadians and white people in there. You know what I'm saying? And so what you got to do is you got to go to the little shitty hotels. And I forget what it was called. It was a little shitty hotel, like right outside, like three, four stories up. And so, you know, the elevator don't work. Or if you in the elevator, it's small as a motherfucker. You and four motherfuckers can't get in the elevator. So, you know, we walking up the stairs. We done partied all night. No, mind you, it's not 2 a.m., it's like 4.30 a.m., okay? That's what you got to... These, these, they don't close. They high as a motherfucker. I, you know, and I'm with mine, you know, we rolling and I had the other one like, where's the old girl at? Where's the fuck she at? And next thing I know, his, the door done open and he done went to his goddamn room and I can't go back down the stairs because I'm tipsy. She t- We ain't going back down. The, I'm not going to fight him for my bitch in the hallway. I'm going to just take the bitch I got and go upstairs and like, goddamn... <laughs> And I'm like, God damn. I'm like, boy. And then you know what she asked me the next morning? She was mad at him. She was like, did you use the condom? <laughs> I was like, oh, my nigga. But I'm sure he did. God bless you. But anyway, that's my friend. You got to have memories like that, fellas. You got to have memories, memories like that. Because you made, you made me pull up my old uh, vacay <laughs> pics at 42. Oh, bro. <laughs> My man said, yeah, uh, book, book, and, and the thing was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, book, the Book of Digs, 9 11, the albums of Omegas, uh, may bicker over a lady, yet the noops shall bless them all with the ham. Ah, that's a shout out to the all the capital, man. My man, big man, 7917, new member. Thank you so much. Anyway, look, man, King Barracuda, you came through. What would you like to add to the conversation, bro? Well, I'll keep it brief. Um, I'll say first, you guys give me permission to still get it out of my system, right? So I can, yeah, I can right have right. permission, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hung out in Jamaica. Too. I went up to a little place called Brownstown. They got a nice little strip club in Jamaica. And Brown, there's some dirty shit going on in them hills in Jamaica. Y'all stay the fuck out of them hills in Jamaica. You, fuck, you gotta know somebody to be up there. You be well, somebody in the taxi driver, and it better be a bald head black motherfucker with a little thirty eight in his pocket. You better fucking know somebody. Brownstown, 
Brownstown, Jamaica. I fucked around and end up with a uh, with a motherfucking Jamaican hooker. Mm. I'm like, God damn, how the fuck? This is scary being up in this motherfucker. I'm like, what blood clot? Yeah, come on. What? I'm like, hold on, ma'am. I'm good. Let me go back to my friends. They ain't got but one kind of beer to drink, red stripe. Okay, that's it. You you you. It, it's going to take three hours to get you a plate of food, so don't get too drunk, okay? I'm just fucking telling you. But, uh, yeah, man, I, I had some great times in a lot of little dirty corners of the world, okay? So but what I'm telling you, I give all that shit up, and I gave all that shit up for one good, solid woman. Get it out of yeah. your system. Get it out of your system. But go ahead, King Barracuda. Let me let you go. Oh, go ahead. That's man, my job. Right. I'll say this. I say look at look at the, uh, the different – the different intellect you attract to your page, mm -hmm. you know, and, and all you don't, you don't have to be doing all this stuff. You know, mm -hmm. you're, you're an attorney, well-renowned, you, you've got your accomplishments and um, I did a little uh, tribute to it, but you, you basically, the people who want, want to cancel you damn. for having an opinion, having a mouth, right? Oh, damn. Yeah. It, it's, but it, they're just going to make you stronger, and there's no way it's going to happen. And you got people, prominent figures coming to your page. So, I mean, women, uh, you're 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 known around the world now, and you got women from uh, Africa, Brazil coming on your page. If he's such a bad guy, why are these people coming up and showing respect to his page and having intellect and good mm -hmm. conversation? They're yeah. attractive too. Well, and I know it's the ones. Who we on some Don't bullshit sit. tonight. I just want you to know we on some yeah. bullshit as of this last 25 minutes. But we're gonna clean it up again. We'll we'll go back to our regularly scheduled shit. But we on some man bullshit tonight, okay? Because yeah. we're just talking to the fellas. But go ahead, brother. Go ahead. But you you hey, but you can have fun. You know, you know when to have fun and joke, and you know when to keep it professional. And that's I can't that's believe it. that nigga hung up on me talking about I got Nigga, you know what the fuck you did. Like, <laughs> you know what the fuck you did, goddamn me up. You took my bitch and you owe me a bitch, and I don't care how long it was. I want my bitch back. I was supposed to have two bitches that night, and I ended up one short, sir. Yeah, you want to read it? That's fucked up. Can't do that. But go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm i just having flashbacks. Not, not, not you, you know, good. I feel like somebody owe you something. Thank <laughs> you. Oh. You can't just take a man bitch like that after he done bought all the drinks and set her out like that. That's what cute dogs do. <laughs> they take each other. Damn. Wow. You know, they good to hang out with. They good for getting the party started and they barbecue, but they will take your bitch. You got to watch them cute dogs. Terrible. <laughs> and, uh, my two cents. Uh, appreciate you, man. Uh, thank you so much, King Bear. Let's get my man Cody Marshall up in here. Bro, what, 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 talk, talk to me, man. Talk to me, brother. Let, holla. Well, yeah. I, I didn't have my little phone when I was working on cruises in Hawaii. And Let's talk about the Bible. Go ahead. I had some good times in Hawaii, too. What had happened was I met this bitch <laughs> and I was over there getting myself together. I was 21. My grandma had passed away. I was sad as a motherfucker, right? And since you brought up Hawaii, y'all brought this shit up, right? So I'm going to talk about it. Okay. I, I used to work out there. And, okay. So so uh, my uncle lived in Mililani. Right over there, uh, it's the one I think it's close to Waikiki Beach. So we had a little oh, okay, I'm so familiar with it. Over there to Waikiki Beach and hang out with the tourists and shit. They got some fine motherfucking women in Hawaii. They, you, when I tell oh, you, yeah, tear down their motherfucking <laughs> back, ain't nothing as fine as a motherfucking Samoan woman when she young. Don't get them when yeah. they old. Oh, them. yeah, especially yeah. if they got a little mixture <laughs> in them. So I met this chick, man, and, and I write about this in my book too, man. I'm at the hood club, and I don't know it's hood club because everything looks so beautiful. These bitches is in the motherfucking. They are in the club with sandals on and shit because they don't wear high heels over there. They wear sandals <laughs> everywhere. I met this this chick, man, and she was fucking gorgeous. Uh, I'm going to call it by her. I'm going to just say her name is, is JP. Her name is JP. So, uh, you know, I, I get her phone number. This is when cell phones is just popping out. Mind you, I'm 21. I'm a young motherfucker. This is a long time ago, right? It's 95. Uh, and I tell my uncle, I was like, uncle, man, I met this lady, man. She she invited me to come hang out with her. And uh, she lives on the back, back of the island. He was like, really? Where? I was like, she lives over here. And I tell her where, he, uh, Oklahoma Bay or Sokanana Bay or something. I forget what it's called, but it's the bay on the back of the island. And that- Is, it, local, was it, is it an offshore? 
somewhere yeah, in the yeah, love yeah. Before you got to take that that highway. I think it's Highway One. You got to take Highway One all the way around to the back of the island, and uh, I forget the name of the bay. Okay, but it's a bay, and, and the locals are already like, why the fuck you going to the back of the island? Ain't nothing back there but one thing, you know. And so I went back there. I, I was asking my uncles. This is before we had cell phones with like Google Maps and shit. And uh, and he see, you know, he got his little map. Okay, go here in the corner. You sure you want to go to the back of the island? How well do you know this young lady? What's going on? So I'm like, well, she's this is lady I met in, you know, I met her in the club, uncle. She's a nice lady. So I'm riding around his big old bins. My young 21-year-old ass, because he's a stockbroker over there, okay? And so I'm just following, you know, I'm following the map. I'm easing around there. I come up on the motherfucking Marine base. I'm like, okay, I'm just as goofy as a mother. Okay, we're going to the Marine. Niggas is looking at my driver. Where you going? I'm going over to uh, uh, Bungalow's 10, you know, here in the back. I'm here to visit a friend, right? And like, all right. So they wave me on through. I get to the motherfucking spot, look like some normal little apartments and shit. So I go up to her floor. It's the second floor. I go up there and uh, I walk in, in the door and it's like, okay, it's just, it's t- I see two bedrooms, you know, and she come out and she got like a little skirt on, no shoes on, you know, just like a little skirt, that long black hair. And I'm telling you, when I say long, I mean all the way past the butt. Oh, yes. It just, it's <laughs> you know, just, just. Mm-hmm. The windows is open in this motherfucker, so because ain't no air condition necessary. So we sit on the couch and we chop it up for a minute. And I'm young and I'm handsome then, right? I'm muscular and shit. I'm about 220 pounds, fresh, you know, out of college and shit, buff, running every day. I was running 10 miles and so anyway, I'm looking good, you know. And uh, she was like, I like you. You remind me of uh, you look like a Samoan man. I, I thought you were mixed when I first met you. I'm like, really? Okay. Afakasi. I thought you were Afakasi. I'm like, what the fuck is Afakasi? Don't be fucking disrespecting me. I ain't going to be your niggas. No, no. That means mixed Samoan and black. I'm like, oh, oh okay. Oh, oh, okay, bitch. You like, okay, good, good. You know, I'm still an LA nigga, right? You know what I'm saying? But, uh, but, uh, but anyway, so she's sitting on the couch. This is the decision that popped up. Okay. Come to find out, I'm on a motherfucking Marine base for married couples and families. Her man is a Puerto Rican dude who's over off somewhere else in another island somewhere with a machine gun running up a mountain. And I'm in the house with his wife. Whoa. I ain't know. She didn't tell me I was coming to the fucking Marine. I didn't know. That's when my uncle was looking at me sideways Mm. like, you know the fuck you going? Uh, Nephew, you going to the Marine base. Where, where uh, you know, the bitches who are married are, you know, a lot of the local girls end up with <laughs> with some of these dudes. Uh, so she's sitting on the couch. You don't talk for about 15 to 20 minutes. She said, look, this I'm married. This is my husband's. This is my husband's house. He's overseas right now. I don't expect him back anytime soon. I'm about to go through my bedroom door. If you want to come through that door, I'll be in there. If not, there's the front door. And the bitch got up and walked and walked to her bedroom door and closed the motherfucking door behind her. And I had a life changing decision I needed to make right then and there, fellas. I want y'all to understand something. I, I sat there and I'm like, oh my God, this is, I'm, this is adultery. <laughs> and I was thinking like, this is terrible. This man is over defending our country and and he's overseas, and he's, I mean, I'm surrounded by fucking M16s. I'm sure there's plenty of them on here, and this is just the wrong thing to do. And so I stood up, and I looked at that front door, and I walked into that bedroom, and I <laughs> it all motherfucking night long. That bitch put her feet in my chest. That hair was whipping everywhere. The motherfucking the windows was open and shit. It was the best time I ever had in my life. You know what I mean? The best <laughs> fucking time. That was the most exotic oh I've ever had in my whole life. I will never, my 21 year old dick, oh. as happy as it ever could be. That bitch gave me a whole new perspective on life. You understand me? My grandma had just died, and I was, I was happy than the motherfucker after that night. End up meeting the bitch again. She gave me some motherfucking head on the top of Diamond Head. Okay, it was got to be got, got, got a motherfucking uh, uh, place uh, on diamond head. 
<laughs> no, I got to drink to this, man. I, I can't. While, while, while it was still under construction. You understand me? And, and, and I'm, <laughs> I got to drink to that. I'm sad. I'm, I'm sad that I did it. And I <laughs> promised myself to never fuck with another married bitch again. Okay? But I did that night and the following day. And uh, it is what it is. Okay? It is what it is. I made a mistake. Do I apologize for it? I don't know. I don't know if I apologize for it. Matter of yeah. fact, if I recall, when I was on the motherfucking mountain getting some head, I called my, what's up? Is Charles Sander for there? Yes, what's up, Sugar Bear? What's happening, man? <laughs> this is Dennis Sperling. How you doing, bro? Baby face. I know. Hey, man, remember that time I called you from the top of the motherfucking mountain and I was fucking with that Hawaiian bitch and she was giving me some head? Remember that day? Remember that shit? Sugar Bear, me and him play football together. We go way back to high school. I was just telling some people, remember that shit I called you up, man? I was like, nigga, I'm on the top of a motherfucking mountain. Get some head from a long head, fine ass wine, bitch. And remember that shit, bitch? Do you remember that? Yes, sir. He said, yeah. I'm, uh, yeah. I'm telling you, man, this is my homie Sugar Bear, man. I, I love this dude. He was a year younger than me, man. We, we just... We the I, 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 hey bro, how you been? You been good, bro? Yeah, I've been good. All right, man. Hey, man, I'm gonna chop it up with you soon, man. But I motherfuckers don't believe this shit, all the shit that I done did, Sugar Bear. I don't believe the bullshit <laughs> that I done went through. But I called Sugar Bear. Sugar Bear said, "Shit, I want to be there too." <laughs> Mind you, just so you know, this dude, this dude, Sugar Bear was like 15 years old, could bench press 400 pounds. Damn, you know what I'm saying? wow. Uh, this, Type of people I, can I grew do 270 up. at that age. No, nah, no, nah, these are the type of people I grew up with. Some real hard. I love my homeboys, and that's why I go so hard for the brothers because I've seen like Jamal and some of my other friends who I love to death. I've seen so many great black men, better than me, smarter than me, better leadership skills. I've seen them take so many bad turns, and and that's why I love y'all so much, man. Like I've lost so many good friends. You understand? And I just thank God I have people like, well, I'm going to say your fake name, your old school, Sugar Bear. I don't want the government to know. I know you got your life together and everything. But uh, <laughs> I, I, that's why I love it. Man. But, uh, hey, man, thanks for taking the call, bro. I'm going to hit you up another time. All right, bro? All right. Did, did you make it out to Hawaii yet? Did you get out there and get you one of them fine Hawaiian bitches like I did that day? <laughs> that's my nigga. All right, bro. I'll talk to you later, bro. God bless you, man. All right. All uh, right. Yeah, man, that's what I'm saying. See, I got niggas to tell you what I say is the motherfucking truth, okay? I'm not making this shit up, okay? I'm at the top of the hill. I got a bad bitch, like, sugar bear. What's up, nigga? I'm, I'm on the top of a diamond head getting some head from a fine-ass Hawaiian Samoan <laughs> <laughs> He's like, really? Like, yeah, nigga, this is what I'm doing. Nigga, this is mine. I'm 21. I'm fresh out of high school. I'm like, nigga, this is what I'm doing right motherfucking now. Nigga, this is amazing. This, this is out fucking standing. Well, you get to see the beautiful scenery. Yeah, and then I, my dumb ass decided to get married at 27. I was not ready for that shit. Are you kidding me? Are you, Are fucking, you fucking kidding me? Kidding me? Let's just be on. I, I, I got to cut. We got to end this show. Let, this is too much. This is too goddamn much. Hold on. Let's see, bro. I, I had to drink to that one, bro. I had to drink to that one, bro. Look, I had to drink to that one. I like to like, like, go up here and hug my fiance before she gets rid of my ass. Like you're a fucking whore. That's what you are. You're on the internet, fucking telling her all the fucking bitches you're fucking wet. Fuck that. <laughs> I got to cut it out. I got you know my mom's watching that shit. No, I got to I stop. Oh, oh. Man, cut it out. Hey, hey. Remember, <laughs> remember she was a Kevin Samuels fan and you're high by your man. So I know she knew what the fuck she was getting. I told you motherfuckers I wouldn't shit. I told y'all I'm a good daddy. I love my kids. I make a lot of money. I'm an educated man. But as far as dick shit, I ain't shit just like the rest of y'all. You see what I'm saying? And then I shouldn't have fucking got married. Right? You know? Anyway, so the book of Dennis 2 and 13, legend has it in the phase of, of <laughs> heaven. Dusty I, nuts, I, man. I, I love a spew about the island. Praise God. Praise. So I love island. I love Asian women. I, I love you. I got a special place in my heart for the people of Samoa. Cause they produce a one. Yeah, them, them, them islanders, bro. They, they, they ain't nothing nice, man. They give it to you. Hawaiian, I'm telling you. 
I can't yeah, wait man. to drop my sons off. You see, I got these niggas in here living away, <clears throat> getting buff. I'm gonna drop their ass off somewhere, and they gonna come back like I'm a grown man now. That's like son. I made you buff and irresistible to these hoes, son. You had a good diet for your whole life. Now these bitches want to do strange things to you, son. Just, just enjoy it, you know? Just enjoy it. <laughs> it's a whole lot of shit. I mean, I do the because, see, man, the crazy they thing be, is, man. I, they I, be I, fixing I, your spam and eggs. I'm telling I, you. I, let me tell you, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a great <laughs> father because I've ha I have a wealth of experiences. Mm -hmm. And I know what my sons are going to have to deal with. Right. And so what I do is I like, okay, let's hit these weights. Let's do this martial arts shit. Why? Because that's going to make you strong. You ain't going to have no fear of nobody. You're going to walk wherever you walk and you confident. And women can smell confidence like good cologne. You understand? And so if you confident, you don't need nothing else. Imagine being the motherfucker. You know, I can whoop everybody ass in this room. Imagine being that dude. Fuck you and your Rolls Royce. Fuck you and your money. I can whoop your ass and you give off that sort of confidence. But you're cool about it. Cause you didn't get it the wrong way with the toxicity. You see what I'm saying? You got it the right way. And then you come from a father who you love and respect, who is an honorable man who ain't did committed no crimes. You see what I'm saying? That, that gives you a certain confidence level. So when you walk in the room, bad bitches going to run to you. And I couple that with some height. They got some natural height. They got a little charisma. Little motherfuckers can dance a little bit. You know what I mean? They, they, they lift weights on a regular basis. I keep them like that. They keep their diet down. <clears throat> All the mistakes that was made with me, I don't allow those mistakes to be my son. So, yeah, anywhere they walk in the world, these young men are going to have everything that we wish we had. You see what I mean? The women just falling at their feet. Now, of course, they're going to have their ups and their downs. But getting a woman ain't going to be a problem. Being good to her, being kind to her, being, being a, a provider, that's going to be the shit. You see what I'm saying? But at least the attraction issue won't, won't be there. You see what I'm saying? They're they going to have that. But um, anyway, fellas... Shout out to Herschel Reed. Shout out to all. I done said too goddamn much. This last, I'm gonna cut the last 40 minutes off this broadcast. Y'all ain't gonna see the shit. Ain't gonna see the light of day. Shout out to my girl Joan J. But you boys travel, enjoy your lives. It's a big world out there. I hope you have a tenth of the experiences that I've had. I've had a lot. You see what I'm saying? Now, I know it's gonna be. He getting a dick stuck on the top of a goddamn mountain. Was she black? She wasn't even black. I know, bitches. I know. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> but but what I'm saying is, man, the world is yours, fellas. Enjoy your life. You understand what I mean? G get on out there and enjoy life. Life is good. Uh, but understand the marriage is something different. If you ain't ready, you ain't ready. You know what I'm saying? Take a whole nother level of, 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 of you know. And if you just gonna go get a woman from somewhere else and fuck over when you bring her back here, what's the fucking point? Now mm -hmm. you ain't shit. Now you just messed it up for the next man that's going overseas. So just chill, right. you know. You want to fuck around? Let it be known. I'm here to fuck around. You know, I'm gonna pay for these hoes. I'm having a good time and I'm enjoying myself and whatnot. And but other than that, man, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, when it's time to be serious, be serious. Don't put that title. Don't put that sort of pressure on yourself in 2021, 20, 22, 20. Shit, don't put that sort of pressure on yourself at 35. Don't put that sort of pressure on yourself if you know you ain't ready, no matter what age you are. You understand me? That's just not wisdom. Cause now all you're looking at is a fucked up divorce and broken family shit. That ain't cool, man. But either way, man, God bless y'all. I love y'all. I hope y'all appreciate this. Lord, we need to, we need to all the that, that was look that I, I got a good drink and I that uh, was a good one. That's a good story. <laughs> on all the saints. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Let all the let all the saints come in. <laughs> we we not bring up that video. <laughs> Wow. Can I get the cards to him a tune for me? Come on, everybody. Let's sing. Let's sing together. Wow. Let's sing Amen together. Ready? Let's let's be Amen. Amen. Wow. Amen. Come on, everybody. Amen. 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 We need that. All that praise God. Let the saints come down and, and, and bless me. Let me be helpful. Let all the brothers who listen to this be helpful. Let you angry ass women who normally don't like me get a motherfucking laugh. I just did what we done did tonight. I know you bitches are mad. You want to cancel me? Okay, I just got on this motherfucker. I ain't got a hundred thousand followers. Go cancel some of them hundred thousand motherfuckers. Leave me alone. Praise God. Anyway, man, God bless y'all. Love y'all. This is up to be your mouth.